baby. Woo! S D P P P. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Was that an earthquake? In New York, or just the fallout of the line brawl between the Devils and Rangers? Uh, ha ha! Ha ha! You know what? This That's uh, the ha-ha. first thing that's going to make me walk out of this studio, this show. That's the first thing. I think there will be another. I think it's the only thing, okay? I think uh, it's bad, and a lot of people turn their TV off when it happens. Oh, the fights? Yeah. Yeah, I sure, I sure don't like hockey fights. I... Listen, I understand why it's dumb. I also understand why it rules. Hey, can it we, is just, the, can we admit the, sports the, are dumb, dude? Well, it's a hypocrisy of, of hockey. Hypocrisy, mm. if you will. Mm. Um, I just, I don't know. I can't help that I find that it slaps. All right, three seconds into the game. And by the way, this is a fan perspective of the New York, New Jersey opening face-off. This video. The fan is named. Well, we can't. Ryan Novazinski. Yes, we freaking no, can. We can't. I told you that beforehand. No, we can't. Just Drew. Why? They're shaking his head. He's Why? There. Because in it's footage YouTube inside channel. of an NHL arena during an NHL. That's game. fucking yeah. stupid. It is fucking yeah. stupid. How is that possible? You should whistles, be able to show fan show footage. Go, go ahead, Drew. Between whistles, you can't show footage from puck drop to and two yeah. seconds in. Can't do it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's stupid. That's why when you were like, oh, it's copyright uh, free. All right. Can we, can we at least can we at least scroll or scrub it? We can show the picture. Hold yeah. On. Let's show the picture. Yeah. And then let's show what happens a few seconds later. Look at all those guys. Those professional hockey people making millions of dollars. Ah, and there they go. So uh, every everyone talking about this being planned. I don't think it was Mm-mm. actually. I think. Obviously, uh, what was I it? think Rempy was planned. Rempy McDermott. McDermott Rempy yeah. McDermott was planned, and I think Lazar and VC went at each other right away. But um, the rest of them are just sort of standing around, and they're like, "Well, I guess we'll fight." Yeah. But then everyone who wasn't in the first fight, which was Lazar, I think VC, uh, got kicked out. And I saw the names. It's they really buried the lead in telling the story. Cause they're like, Oh, there was a line brawl, Rempy McDermott. And I'm like, how about the captain of the New York Rangers was kicked out of the game three seconds in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which I can't Andre Miller too. Yes. Which is not something I think the Rangers ever would have done on purpose. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> like that's, that's just a terrible idea. Um, if you know, this is going on at the beginning of the game, don't even bother dressing two defensemen for the opening. Face yeah. Off. Based on who was out there, it clearly wasn't staged the entire line brawl. Yeah. And yeah. I hate two it. of them. Maybe I hated it. <clears throat> I think yeah? this is bad for the sport. Let's nobody enjoy this. I actually had my favorite. Actually, my favorite reaction to this was the TNT panel and Henrik Lundqvist going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty cool. That's hey, listen. This is um, this is the joys of being a hockey fan. Uh, yeah, I know there's probably, it's probably some scary stuff happening, but at the same time, man, it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I have to weigh my priorities, right? I have to, I have to weigh my morals, but between, um, Matt Rempe shouldn't fight every game because he's going to burn out. And that's a crazy thing to do to yourself. And he's only 21 mm-hmm. versus every time he fights, he looks like a pig in shit. Yes. <laughs> like he loves it. Yes. He loves. Yes. It. Uh, it's also done like wonders for growing the game. Like people talk about fights like this when they don't even watch hockey. You yeah. know, it like makes news. And we, you got to balance that with like, we don't want to see people get CTE and have right. brain trauma well, forever. But these things also help hockey grow. So as fans of hockey, we're, we're happy that people are talking about hockey. I think some will dispute that it helps it grow. Because if it helped it grow, then, you know, I mean, hockey would have. I don't think that it's it's been around forever. It would have surpassed everything. Right. Like some people think they didn't say it would make it the number back. one. Sport. Yeah. They it, just that's said not it, what it, does, it exposes oh, okay. it to more people. Yeah. It, I, listen, I think... I'm not disagreeing with you. Mm-hmm. Like, I do think it's a it's a huge conversation starter, especially today because it's rare. Like, yes. Like a line brawl happens once, maybe twice a season. Mm hmm. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like this made like Pat McAfee's second segment on his show because well, of course it, it did. it's a line brawl that happened in a hockey game. That's but it exciting. sucks. Boo. That's, and then now you have Pat McAfee and all these shows talking about hockey, which then grows the game. But it balances out between you don't want to see a bunch of people brain injuries, you know. But yeah, like I think it's safe to say that fighting grows the game in some ways. In some ways, it's I still like, uh, hey, it's hypocritical that you like fighting. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I can't 
reconcile it. I can't justify it, but I see a fight and I go, we. Yeah, right. And I can't help that. Uh, I think on the, on the ice part of it, um, obviously the the uh, the the New Jersey Devils New York Rangers rivalry dating back to I think the original hit was on Siegenthaler, uh, or was it? Yes, or yeah. was it uh, Bastion? Bastion. And well, then the, it was the first about? one. Yeah. yeah, first one was Bastion, yeah. and that was Rempy, and, and then and Siegenthaler, Siegenthaler was Rempy. Yeah. And got demolished. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, yeah, then he hit Siegenthaler. And, and then he was, was waving at McDermott hit. as Rempy was waving at McDermott the last time they played, getting off the ice. And McDermott's like, oh, I just, there's a code. Yeah, well, yeah, I lost respect for him, which I don't blame him. I mean, yeah, you're the tough guy and you're little finger waving at me on your way off the ice after getting kicked out. You stink. That no, I would want to beat him up too if I was McDermott and had the faculties to do so. Here's the question. Has Matt Rempe won a fight? Oh, how dare you? Well, he beat the brakes off of Siegenthaler. Okay. Um, yeah, what are you talking but about? But Siegenthaler's not. I know, I know. Come I know. on. He like a real fight. He didn't do that great in Delorier. I, uh, I thought the Matt Martin fight was pretty good. The first ever one. Oh, in the outdoor yeah. Game. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was good. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that one. Well, yeah. he only fights, uh, like, well, outside of Siegenthaler. Uh, Salt. Siegenthaler. There we go. Outside of Siegenthaler, uh, he only fights, like, the toughest guys in the league. Yeah, he's only doing heavyweights. Yeah, mm-hmm. Matt Martin, um, Delorier, Reeves. Reeves. Uh, McDermott was traded for specifically to fight. With Who him. won? Uh, Columbus beat him up. Oh man, watched. Olivier. Olivier, yeah. Jesus, that guy's a problem. Oh yeah, yeah. he's huge. Yeah, 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 and just tough as nails. Um, yeah, he only fights the toughest guys in the league. It's, it's, uh, it's very weird. Like we've been doing this podcast for over ten years, and we watched the decline of the goon, and we watched the decline of. Dress him because he's big. Um, well, because a lot of bad teams were like, here's how we'll get good. We'll just fight everybody. And the least for one of them. And it sort of worked a little bit. I mean, you have to play hockey, though. And the problem with the least was they didn't have any hockey players. They they won. They won hockey games in like the least analytically inclined way ever. Yeah. Which is we're going to get outshot and outchanced every game. We're going to bury more of our chances than them somehow. And we're going to beat the shit out of you. What's the Florida Panthers model currently? Uh, or at least last year in the playoffs. Nah, they're, they're, yeah, last year, I think. This year, they're just much better, mm-hmm. um, I think. But, um, and now we've seen it slowly rise to like, this is. Like the '80s are coming back. Mm-hmm. Like not only <laughs> that's no, an exaggeration. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> the '80s are coming back in offense, mm-hmm. right? So goal scoring is skyrocketing, and save percentages are plummeting, and shooting percentages is going up. Um, I feel like I, I don't know what the official numbers on fights are, but I think they're going up. I think they're going up, man. Like it's mm-hmm. this is we're. I don't know about going backward. But we're certainly changing style here. Yeah. And it like anything, the, the pendulum will swing. And after a while, everybody will get too big. There'll be too many Patrick Colettas in the league. And then uh, and then you, it'll go back to, mem- you know, Pat- remember Patrick Coletta? He was like, that was the guy you picked. Well, it's just he couldn't. He wasn't an NHL player. No, he was just a, a psychopath. Yeah, he was just a yeah. remorseless borderline criminal. Absolutely. And brought people to his, their feet, but like was not. He wasn't there because he was like, man, you're so good at hockey or John Scott or any of these other guys. Right. It was not it's not d- dismissing what they had. They were able to play in NHL games and John Scott had his story and whatever. But yeah. those guys did disappear for like five years. And having somebody like Matt Rempe, is he the most popular Ranger right now? Must be. Uh, Has to be. got to be up there like him or like Panarin is going for a scoring title. Potentially, uh, there aren't many more. And dude, pay attention to the reception Reeves gets uh, during home games. Oh my God. In Toronto. People love Everyone him. knows when he's on the ice and they cheer for every hit, no matter how inconsequential it is. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't throw a ton of those though. What hits? No, inconsequential hits. He does throw good hits. He's or trucking has lately. people. Yeah. He's, it, it's, people still like it, man. They still like it. Well, I think one of the things that I've I've kind of noticed this year is how much more I enjoy watching the Leafs because they're tougher. And I No one I, wants to see your team get their ass kicked all the time. Yeah. I love them watch scoring goals, but they can score goals. They've proven they could score goals. And now they can be tough and score goals. And I like that. I wanna I wanna see some I didn't, you know, I didn't get into hockey because it was a a gentle sport. I liked the fact, even as a kid, that there was there was roughness to it. 
mm-hmm. right? And it's not. It's like I, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to watch football to 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 always see guys like avoid a tackle. Sometimes you want to see somebody get lit up. <laughs> like it's just mm-hmm. you know, it's well, like even even like Pavel Datsuk, like one of his most notable highlights is that time someone tried to hit him and he ended up hitting his teammate instead. Oh, yeah, I think it was Detroit Sharks. I think it was Mike Greer trying to hit him and I, I can't remember his teammate, but he flattened him. I, th- I think that's a really good point about what you're there to watch, Adam, because like it's a it's a, a sport that allows hitting for a reason. You want to see that as well because it's in the game. Mm-hmm. And for Steve, about your thing about fights going up, they've gone down actually from oh, yeah? last year, this year, uh, 21 21 22 331 total fights 22 23 almost identical 334 so three more and this year with uh the amount of time left in the season we're at 294 fights so Ah. unless there's like 40 you think there's gonna be 40 fights oh a couple more line brawls we'll get there okay (laughs) we'll get there it's like someone having a hat trick like uh matthews if he's going for 70 oh now it's looking a little more realistic. Uh, so it looks like we'll be down uh, from last year to this year in terms of total fighting. That's crazy that we're down this year. But I think maybe it's more consequential. It's made a bigger impact. I think Rempy has brought back the goon factor to the game, which is like really cool to see. How many of the fights does he have? Right. Like, <laughs> what percent? In the last like two weeks too, you know? Like oh he's God. he's just been... I think fantastic for for hockey, just because uh, he's been such a like conversation piece. Yes, he's he's been extremely noteworthy, man, mm-hmm. and it it helps that it's in Madison Square Garden. Uh, Paul Bissonette tweeted out that he thought that this year could be. He's anti fighting, by the way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he thought that this year could be one of the best years in the NHL just ever. Now, obviously, there's recency bias to that, but I don't. I, I can tell you that of the last five years, it's the most entertaining. Mm-hmm. I think COVID has something to do with that. But I also yeah. feel like there just seems to be there. There's a lot. There's more electricity. The rivalries feel better. The product's better. Yeah. What is that? I, What's the je ne sais quoi about that? Everyone's scoring more. Uh, everyone's scoring more. And something that in, in their quarterly emails that the NHL always sends out, one of the first things they have listed is is how many comebacks there are this year. It's something like it's something like half of all games are comeback wins. Uh, and so you're a, never out of it till like till the whistle blows. There's right? no reason to turn a game off. Ever. Ever pretty much. Like the moment the Leafs were down 5 nothing to Columbus and came back, I'm like, "Well, I guess I can't turn a game off." And Drew keeps making fun of me on stream nights cuz the Leafs are up 5 nothing on the Oilers and I'm like, "Well, it's the Leafs and it's the Oilers. Watch out. And then it was 5-3 and Drew's like, oh, see, what were you worried about? I'm like, what was I worried about? <laughs> they were a bad 90 seconds away from blowing. Uh-huh. It's, what are you talking about? Right? Like there, there's no game, no game worth turning off. And the we're seeing it in the Hart Trophy race where you have McDavid, Kucherov, and McKinnon just competing at an obscene level of points. Like they're all at like one in the 130s now like they're getting up there and having this level of scoring has been awesome for the game and people are talking reckless now too because did you see the discourse from last night is Sidney crosby jumping up into the heart conversation that was elliot friedman tweeting that dude a bunch of to, people agreed uh, trying to stir things up and oh they'll, they'll win it. there if they make the but, playoffs he'll win it uh, uh, i don't win think it. that's the case because a lot of people disagreed with him he might he, finish well, top five yeah in voting i he think is, he's probably fourth he's driving a shit rocket all the way all the way to uh, like those guys are are all of them are sick and Sidney crosby's like we're not missing the playoffs mm-hmm. it's all incredible it's I, absolutely incre- and they have 81 points i think he's probably fourth, <laughs> but i think those three guys i just listed are probably are definitely ahead of Sidney crosby it's three yeah. guys. What are the lightning without Kucherov? Exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. It's it's three guys scoring at like a hundred and forty point clip. Mm-hmm. Uh, a guy who might score seventy and Crosby. <laughs> it's a really good. Oh, prop. you're throwing Austin Matthews in there. He's, he's if he scores seventy <laughs> goals for the first time in like when was the last thirty years? Seventy goal season. Thirty years. I think it's got to be since at least Solani, Solani or Hall, whichever whichever was ninety four. Who was it? Solani who the or Hall? Had it in ninety four. Mario? Or was it McGillney? Solani was 93. McGillney, I think, was McGillney. 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 Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, dude, it's been a very long time. Yep. Oh, no, I, I'm not disagreeing with yeah. you. Well, I, I think mean, Jesse is. Jesse, that's hates, my I, I, no, Jesse I think, hates Austin I Matthews. I think he's definitely uh, not top four. 
You think he's not top four? I think the three. I think McDavid's ahead of him. Kucherov's ahead of him. McKinnon's ahead of him. Those are all fair. And then if we want to put Crosby in that conversation, Crosby would be ahead of Matthews if they make the playoffs. And then even if Matthews scores seventy, and then what do you do? You think Crosby is below Matthews if they make the playoffs? So so I think I think I think it'd be Crosby than Matthews. This shows you how important the next like couple weeks are because Mm -hmm. if Matthews hits seventy changes my opinion like pretty significantly also if the penguins miss the playoffs like if matthews does one and if if he scores 70 and crosby's uh penguins don't make the playoffs no i'm I'm not putting crosby ahead of they need to make the playoffs that's a requirement here yeah Yeah. and like if matthews ends at 69 goals and he's just short it'll be pretty nice which is still the cap era record Mm -hmm. but does the round number of 70 make any difference yes and and you're kidding yourself if if you're saying it doesn't. From a of course yeah, it does. It, 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 does that make sense? No. No. But we're human beings. <laughs> but we're not does. supposed to make sense. I yeah. think if he's out of the conversation for MVP at 69, but he's in it at 70, I'm voting Crosby ahead of him. It's a benchmark. Wow. It's a benchmark. We can't help that as humans we like numbers that end with zero. Well, oh, it's, right. it's it's like uh, it's like Medano. Did he did he play fifteen hundred games or did he pay fourteen hundred and ninety nine? No, he's satisfied with fourteen ninety nine. What's your what's your ranking? Uh, those three that you mentioned, mm-hmm. put them in whatever order you want. They're they're I think they're in a tier by themselves. Yeah. right? and no, and then it's Matthews four, Crosby five. I'll tell you this: my vote. Matt, okay, if I had a vote, it would be for Connor McDavid because uh, the comeback. For the Oilers and yeah. the comeback in his points, I know you're booing me, Drew. Uh, it's and I like Kucherov a lot, but like the to me, McDavid and what the Oilers have done, and the fact that you know a couple months ago he's thirty or forty points back at Kucherov. He was so like this far is crazy, this and is you're crazy. all like nah, and I'm like watch, <laughs> and here he is. Well, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> that is a that's a crazy comeback, and I think I think uh, the Oilers being where they are is a freaking miracle. Mm-hmm. Considering how they started, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I I just feel like we sometimes overlook McDavid because we know he's good. We're like, oh, yeah, 100%. he's he's really good. Like, and I was making fun of him last episode because he's regressed by you know twenty points this year. Like, he's probably not going to get. You know, he's well, gonna, he's only going to score one hundred and thirty rather than one hundred and fifty. McDavid wouldn't have those points if it weren't for Zach Hyman. That's right. Yeah. The, <laughs> and like, yeah, it's true. But like, like why? Why? You know, whenever whenever I talk about like. Yeah, this is the new 80s. People go, oh, come on now. Dude, it is. The scoring title was won with 86 or 87 points a few years ago. And there are players who are going to flirt with 50 goals this year who you had no idea. Yeah, it's like it's like a 50 goal season in the 80s and the dead puck era is worth like 20. One year. Like, like Rick, 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 Rick Five, right? Well, no, I was going to say one year Rick Nash and Ilya Kovalchuk split the the rocket with i think 41 goals 41 that's so so sad dude it's pathetic yeah but 40 used to be holy shit it did and now like the other night on the broadcast they said Braden point is closing in on 50 i'm like he is he's at 43 43 like Mm -hmm. yeah but like that's 43 is not even noteworthy anymore he's a really good player i remember sure it's 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 noteworthy to where the lightning are in the standing, but like in terms of the of like trophy conversation, he's not in it. He's not even on the periphery of it, and he's got forty three friggin' goals. He's one of the best players in the league, and he's not even close. Do you Pretty know cool. how many goals Braden Point had last year? I think he had fifty. He had fifty one. <laughs> wow! So he's yeah. so he's getting so worse. It's yeah, I, that's yeah. What, but wow. like then it's not downward trend. <laughs> for forty like forty three is not. Like noteworthy for him. No, it's 51 well, last year. Yeah, but like if 51 wasn't noteworthy last year either mm-hmm. because there were two guys who had 60. Yep. Right, right. That's Ken Reed wrote a whole book about this, Jesse, uh, about, about Dennis Marouk mm-hmm. scoring 60 goals in the NHL. He was hockey's forgotten 60 goal man, even though tw- only 20 players had ever hit 60 when the book was written. And then Matthews and McDavid and Pasternak ruined it. Um, uh, Marouk was third in goal scoring that year <laughs> behind Mike Bossy, who was second and Gretzky, who had 92. Like in a, in a world where 92 is what wins you the goal scoring title. No one remembers 60. You're 30 goals back. 
madness. It, depending on how the next couple of weeks go, it looks like we might be down on 50 goal scorers from last year to this year. Matthews is at 63. Reinhardt's at 53. Hyman's at 52. So we only got three locked in. Nathan McKinnon's going to get it. He's at 48. Yeah. That's four. Pasta's at 47. I think we pencil him in. Yeah. Three goals in the next seven games. Yeah. Like, I think do so. That. Yeah. Now we get to like, eh, this is a stretch. Panarin's at 45. Yeah. He's got to, he's got to heat up. He's got to stay hot at least. And Kucherov's at 43. Mm hmm. Mm, that's, that's interesting the, based on how he's scoring like probably maybe seven's a lot so he's got to do seven and seven yeah he's got you know? the, the Leafs in I think the last game of the season but like who's to say he even plays and Forsberg and Point are both at 43 as well so Forsberg's so damn good and then last year in terms of 50 goal scorers we had McDavid. Connor McDavid who led yeah. with 64 David Pasternak who had 61 Rantanen had 55 Dreisaitl 52 and point 51 so there's only five so we got a chance to tie or beat depending on like if McKinnon uh he's uh if McKinnon gets those goals and then mm -hmm. um let's see if Kucherov can do it or Panarin can sneak in there I love this conversation I yeah, really do. The scoring's like, up and everything. Well, and like this is just version two of the social post we put up. Dudes can just sit around and name athletes mm -hmm. and just be so happy but, about it. But but it's dude, it, this is the it feels like the best year in a long time because it is. Mm -hmm. And this is an incredible era. Like I'm so jealous of people getting into hockey now. The great thing about it, by the way, is that when we brought this graph up last week. You were talking about the new 80s. Yes. Eight, if you if you look at goal scoring on aggregate. We're still well down from yeah. The that's well why I'm like it's we're not even close. I know, well, but we're like, on our way up. It's more like <laughs> right. the mid nineties. Yeah. yeah, but even so, it's fucking awesome. By the way, I did check into it. The last uh, seventy goal scorers were McGillney and Solani, same season, 92, 93, 76. 76 yeah, which is Matthews uh, wasn't born. He wasn't born. It's cool. I think what did you say last episode about the last hundred assist season though? It's only like there's only three guys that have done it, right? <laughs> you, Grant hated, Stephen, you hated Steve and I going at it. No, no, wait. How many players have done it? <laughs> yeah. Well, how many? There's only, there's only three players ever to do a hundred assists. And like that is that less than four? It like, is. That's crazy. <laughs> it's, going four, than two, it's going to be four. It's going to be four this season when McDavid gets his hundredth assist, which is coming in three assists from now, which could be literally any game for Connor McDavid. He could have three assists. I'm so mad at the Dallas Stars. Why? Right when I tweeted, I'm like, here's the clip that McDavid needs to score at to hit a thousand this year. And they shut them out. Yeah. <laughs> Not just him, the whole damn team. But it was uh, Gretzky, Lemieux, and Orr, 100 assists. And Gretzky did it 11 times. <laughs> he was. So it's something dumb. only four people have ever done. And Gretzky did it 11 times you, Jesse, on his own. Th this, is, this is my favorite. <laughs> so whenever anyone uh talks about like Gretzky and the era he played in da, da, da. Mm -hmm. go to the 7980 season fr from the 7980 season to the 9899 season which is Gretzky's career mm -hmm. you'll, you'll Oh you get, want the whole stuff. I want the, I, I want go I want the other page. Yeah yeah yeah. That's uh, that's why I'm talking real slow. <sighs> NHL.com. Stretch for time. 7980. 7980 which was his rookie year 70, to 9899. Uh, how many points did he have, which I know is the NHL record? I think it's 2,851? 57. Damn! 2,857. Mm -hmm. Who's second over that span? That would be Marc Messier with 1,660. <laughs> Gretzky is 1,200 ahead of... Like, okay, if you just took the gap... Between Gretzky and Messier, it would still be like Dino uh, Cicerelli. Yeah, it'd be it's yeah. There is like Doug Gilmore's career between Messier and Gretzky. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yep. It's absolutely By the way, insane. It is kind of crazy when you look at the all time scorers that there are guys up there with 1,300, 1,400 points and a and a dash thirty or a dash in Dale Howarchuk's case, almost a dash hundred. Like his plus minus is oh, dash, plus minus. negative 98. Like what the hell? I know. And Gretzky's 520. A plus 520. That's got to be the, <laughs> hey, is, can we, can we check that? That's yeah. not the record. Who's the best? Who's the, who's the uh, highest? Larry plus Robinson. Minus? You can pull it up. It's unbeatable. It's, uh, it's, it's a, no one will plus ever, plus no one will ever beat that record. Whoa. 722. No one else is above 582. In and and if Bobby Orr played less than half the games and he is a plus 582. Yeah, no, he was in Bobby Orr's. As a defenseman, who's the closest active player? 
Uh, Lidstrom was up there. Chara's up there at three. Marchand. Marchand. Wow. Damn. What? <laughs> wow. Holy crap. Well, I mean, he's Brad never... Marchand is plus 298, which is the highest of any active player. He's never really been on a bad team. Bergeron, right Bergeron there. Yeah, right there. there. Well, not active anymore, but damn, good for Brad. Wow. No one else is really cool. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan McDonough. McDonough. Wow. I guess wow. that makes sense. Just... Plus, for anybody listening, plus 247, Ryan McDonough is 47th all time on the plus minus list. And Brad Marchand was 30th all time. Remember, so. pl plus minus doesn't matter until it gets goofy on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No bad teams. Who's the worst? Ever? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to know that. Uh, oh, oh, boo. No, Why no, did they do I'll that? I'll tell you. I'll Based tell on like you. certain let's, games. Let's, we'll do this in real time. Oh, no. It's Jesse, we're going to be here for hours. Oh, yeah, because plus minus didn't exist for so yeah. long. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get, we'll there's, get no, there. There's only so many NHL players. We'll get there. Okay, all right. Well, while we're doing that, <laughs> while we're doing that, can I run a stat by you? So Jesse's going to be doing that. Is it plus minus? He'll be able to hear this and still respond to it. I got oh, it. I got it. I got it. it. All right, Jesse's got, got it. it. All right, I got a great stat for you. Uh, let me go one more page, see if there's anybody on this page. Mm. Oh, here we go. Yeah. All right. The worst plus minus of all time. Oh, my God. Bob Stewart. Oh, Bob. Minus 257. I don't know who that is. Uh, I remember he, Dave. I had a Dave Babbage card. He's fourth. But he, Bob Stewart, I don't have no idea. Mike Sillinger. He must have played in like the early 60s, late 70s. Can you, can you go back? Uh, oh, wow. Bob Bruins? Stewart. 70, 70s, yeah. 575 games played. Uh, That's first round pick, Bob Stewart. 27 goals in his career. 101 assists. Minus 257. The worst plus minus of all time. He's from Prince Edward Island, which means Ken Reed knows him. Started his career in 1971. Holy finished God. it in 1980. Can we just Holy go through? Hold on. Deal. I just want to talk about this. Can you go back down just to his career stats? Look oh, at the teams sure. that this man played for. Bruins, early 70s, good. California Golden Seals for five years, terrible. And then the Cleveland Barons for two, terrible. Late 70s Blues, terrible. And then the early 80s Pittsburgh Penguins. It's yeah, no wonder. It's of garbage teams. Like, they're all bad. It was. Is there a worse team in the 70s? It's probably the Seals or the Barons. Uh, the only team he didn't play for that was shit that it didn't last that long was the Kansas City Scouts. His first year in the league, he's a plus three in eight games. And he's like, it's to the moon, kid. Uh, Jesse. Nope. <laughs> uh, can you go back? Because I think there's an active player in the top 10, if I'm not mistaken, on the plus minus thing. Am I wrong? No, well, maybe I am wrong. Rasmus Ristolainen, minus 182. Oh, sh he's top. Wow. Yeah, he is. That's what I thought I saw. Oh, damn. That's really bad. <laughs> Oh, 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 that's bad. This when when they're like, oh yeah, the Leafs are looking at him. I had heart palpitations. Bill Kessel's up Kessel? there. Kessel. Oh yeah. Ilya wow. Kovalchuk. Well, it just goes to show it doesn't fucking matter. Well, yeah, Ilya. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, yeah. He's got I three cups. Some, I think I context matters with a stat like that. Oh, as yeah, in, I don't think like you look at Phil Kessel saying, oh, he's one of the top fifty worst plus minuses of all time. You don't say Phil Kessel had a bad career or that was I any do. indication of like his game or anything like that. So. You can only take so much. Top that. line player for one of the worst era of the Leafs ever. And then oh, Lefton okay. was probably, it was definitely robbed of a Conn Smythe yes. trophy. Like, and will be a Hall of Famer. Yes. By and selfish played, Sidney Crosby. And has played the, selfish. <laughs> the, Bad the most consecutive games ever. Like, the dude's had a fantastic career. The plus minus doesn't indicate that. They should take away Crosby's Messier award if he ever won. They should. For that. They should take Messier's Crosby award too. Damn. Um, okay, guys. This is Devin Mitchell who reached out on in Instagram and he's like, did you realize this? He's like, I got a little tidbit. If Dylan Strom finishes the season with more goals than Ovechkin, it will be the first time since Ovechkin's been in the league that he hasn't led the Capitals in goals. Wow. wow. Now, Ovechkin's got 27. Too bad that's not going to happen. You know he has 27? 27 goals. He's still going to hit 30 after all that. Yeah, I, told, I, I said 35. I think you said 30, right? Uh, when we did no, the I bat, don't remember um, twenty nine. I just thought you would find that very interesting. Now, um, here's the thing: Dylan Strom is not leading the team in goals anymore. Yeah, they're not going to let that happen. <laughs> like, I think the Caps, so, the Capitals won't let that happen. So Ovechkin's in the lead; he's going to stay in the lead. When this message was sent, he was. Okay. He no longer is. He's he's got twenty six. Ovi's got twenty seven. Who who do you who do you bet on? Do you bet on Strom over or Ovechkin? Ovi. What the fuck? <laughs> Ovi. All right. Now, who do you bet to win the plus minus race? Dylan Strom at negative 14 or Ovechkin at negative 22? Uh, Dylan. <laughs> Wait, how do you win? Uh, you win by having a closer to zero. 
Oh, yeah, well, then strong. Kellen. If you look at the plus minus for the top four point getters for the uh, Capitals, it's negative 22 Ovechkin, negative 14 Strom, negative 22 Tom Wilson, and negative 18 Connor McMichael. The better Connor Mick. How are these guys a playoff team? They're not, said the New York Islanders, who have leapfrogged them in the standings. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. They have two 60 point scores. So that's it. It takes till you get to the ninth highest scoring player on the Capitals before you get a plus in the plus minus category. And that's Sonny Milano. Uh, as long as we're reading stats sent to us by listeners, can I point one out? Please. And I think a lot of people will uh, enjoy this one mm -hmm. because we've been a little hard on this player okay. and on this organization. Joel said, suggestion for tomorrow's pod. That's today. Slavkovsky's development over this past year. You guys talked about him when he was doing very bad early this season. Habs fans would like some slaff love on the pod. Mm -hmm. And he linked to a tweet from the underscore Habitant. I think I've seen this tweet. Breaking down Slavkovsky's 19-year-old season into thirds. First 24 games, two goals, five assists, seven points, 24-point pace. Next 24 games, four goals, eight assists, 12 points, 41 point pace. Last 24 games, nine goals, 13 assists, 22 points, 75 point pace. That's great. Kids Happy developing. Point. That's how development works. Good for him. Yeah. On a bad team. They're not great. So, you know, I, I think, um, I don't know. There seems to be like a, a real insecurity in Montreal that's up. I think they all secretly think that Slabkovsky could have been a bust. And I think they were concerned about it and worried about it. Of course. And I don't blame them for that. None of them want to admit it. So what they do is they go, let's cherry pick stats and compare him to Matthews. And I don't think that's fair to Slavkovsky. I think Slavkovsky is going to be, I've seen some unhinged Montreal tweets go around. I think Slavkovsky is going to become a very, very good power forward in this league, like a menace. And he's 19. You need to Just be relaxed, man. You need the players around you. Yeah. And I don't I just don't know if they have them yet um, in Montreal. They're going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a problem. It's, it's when well, Lane, Lane Hudson's playing. We'll see what Reinbacker becomes. Yeah. I'd love Mitchkoff to be on that team instead. But, you know, oh, we don't have time to unpack all that. I, I, I'm curious about how Montreal drafts this year because Ken Hughes has been amazing at trading, but I've, they've gone very safe with their picks. Uh, and I'm wondering if they they take a swing at somebody high ceiling, if they're going to draft, like, I would think fifth or sixth overall. Something like that. Oh, they could win the lottery. Uh, I'm not done sucking up uh, to Habs fans. Oh, go. Uh, there were at least three missed calls in last night's Habs Lightning game <laughs> in favor of the Lightning. Oh. I, I did two boarding calls and an instigator that wasn't called. It was absolutely, it was, it was terrible. It was oh. terrible. And that's a Leaf fan saying that. There you go. Yeah, it was brutal. <laughs> Why did you pick that one to watch? Of all the games you could have watched. Why that one? I don't know. Yeah? It was the one on TV. It was the one on TV. To be honest. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. What about the Sens Panthers? That was on TV. Yeah, that was also on TV. I got to pick one of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> was that the Sens Panthers? Was it a, wasn't it a regional game? I don't know. I don't think Probably. I... I don't think I I didn't have Sense Panthers. Did I'm you not see, in the Ottawa region. Speaking of regional games, did you see the tweet that went viral that the Chicago White Sox couldn't play the White Sox game in the White Sox um in the in in the what their stadium is there because it was a regionally blacked out game? Dude. <laughs> when are we when are we done with this? When are they we couldn't done couldn't get it on TV. <laughs> Over on Tech Ops at the White Sox Just ballpark. Stream it illegally. Um I no, uh, you have an you have an in stadium feed. What are you doing running cable? Well, well who's gonna sue us? I don't know us? what they do. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Black I mean Blackhawks. Um White Sox. Blackhawks and White Sox, uh, just steal the game. It's your game. <laughs> just steal it. You're not, not losing any. Steal it if it's yours. Yeah, you're not losing any money. Just steal it. The Steve Dangle Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And listen, if you're feeling a little bit angsty these days, it's because the playoffs are on the horizon. Is that why? Yeah. Hmm. It's well, listen. It's not that it's always raining. It, what if I just like listening to My Chemical Romance? Could be that. Could While be that. it's raining, some would see that as an outlet. You see. But I would say that if you're feeling angsty, it has to be playoffs because you're worried about your team and will they succeed or will they not succeed? Mm. You know, because the playoffs are a painful combination of I'm enjoying this, but I also am in pain until it. this game is over. You know what right. I mean? I right. right. The organ music is nice, though. It is. It's kind of yeah, yeah kinda kinda like that brings you around. So here's the deal. If you're feeling a little bit angsty, check out better help. Um, here's the thing about it is you're able to uh, hook up with a therapist very, very quickly. And if that doesn't work out. You're not feeling the vibe between the two of you. You can switch. You can also use uh, 
uh, you can talk to them via text. You can talk to them uh, via FaceTime. You can talk to them just on the phone. And actually, that's how I get my therapy. I do it over the phone. So much easier. It's one of those things that is easy, it's convenient, it's quick, and it's a lot cheaper than the average cost of therapy. And usually, uh, especially where we are, it's very, very difficult to get a therapist in under six to eight weeks. That's usually the lag time. So if you want to give therapy a try, uh, we've all done it. I still do it. I don't know about you guys, but it's very valuable. So if you want to give it a shot, you should go to betterhelp.com slash STP today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash STP. Okay, so we, we could talk a little bit about the Tampa game, but I think what's more important is Mitch Marner's return to the lineup. And Oh, we don't talk about that. There's been a lot of questions, no, 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 we don't. not about the ankle injury. We're not going to talk about that because we apparently we've all speculated oh, we don't talk too about much. We can't possibly speculate enough. Mm. Um, mm. The question was, uh, can the Leafs, with Bertuzzi, Matthews, Domi working, and McMahon, Tavares, Nylander working, spread the love around over three lines? And it looks like Sheldon wants to give that a shot. But oh. it's not Marner that's moving. Interesting. Who's moving? I mean, you would think... Well, it, okay, I was going to say Domi, but if they're spreading it around... Willie? Willie. Where's Willie's going to play with Nyes and Holmberg. What do we think? So it's Bertuzzi, Matthews, Domi, McMahon, Tavares, Marner, Nyes, Holmberg, Nylander, uh, Dewar, Kampf, Reeves. Okay. Okay. Uh, hear me out. Like, if that kid line is already bad at defense but has some good offensive upside... Yeah, that is actually the logical thing to do. <laughs> you have a fun wee uh, top line. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Holmberg, who's like a pretty responsible, dynamic guy. He lacks a little bit of the high end. You have Nyes, who can be kind of a battering ram. And then you got Willie, who's just give him the puck. Just give Willie the puck. And so I guess that leaves McMahon, Tavares, Marner. Yep. I don't hate that at all. I don't hate that at all. Mm -hmm. I so, oh, uh, you know what? That makes a lot more sense. Willie is a good uh, playmaker. Mm -hmm. Marner's the best uh, on the team. Um, so I like Marner with two dynamic goal scorers and Tavares and McMahon. Um, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Jesse, what do you think? I think that's what I went with last episode, was it not? I said, why don't you pair Tavares with Marner? I think you did. Yeah, yeah I think you did. Yeah, I, I don't know if you suggested Willie with Holmberg. No, I did, I did <laughs> not say that. <laughs> this, I don't know, the question for me for this is a lot of people have questions about Holmberg in that he's a little redundant in that you have two Holmbergs with David Kampf when he's, he's, he's yeah. centerman, you know? And I don't like I don't have strong opinions on Holmberg. Do you guys? Because I see a lot of fans being upset at him. And it's going to be interesting to have him in this position with Nyes and Willie, but I don't know. That decision I, is fascinating. Cool. Okay. okay. Yarn Croak is going to come back in the lineup. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason, YouTube has decided I need to watch the entirety of Game 6 of the 2017 Stanley Cup final between the Preds and the Penguins. Every time a video ends, that auto plays for some reason. And the opening face-off for, I think, every period is Yarn Croak versus Crosby, which means at one point in his career, Yarn Croak was taxed with being the shutdown center for Sidney Crosby. <laughs> And, and he's, today he's not even a center in this Leafs he's, organization. He's you know? played like four games at center his yeah. whole time here. Like to me, that would um, like if they at least had a vague idea of what that would look like on this team would answer a lot of questions, but they're, they're just not playing them there. Mm -hmm. So I guess Holmberg is the, casualty there but then who plays the center it complicates things because Domi has been so good on that line with Matthews but Domi should be your third center but he's played himself into a higher position just off of in on the wing it's good so, to have options it, and definitely it's just it, Holmberg by default has to be your next center I kind of would like uh Yarn Croak when he comes back to play center you want him to try it I want him to yeah. try it it's a little late in the season right um, hopefully it's like riding a bike. Is I get there, the impression it's not. Is there a timeline for when he can return to his injury? They could have a couple of regular season games to try it out. I don't know. As opposed to like, because at the playoffs, you don't try Yarn Croak at center. There are some people well, suggesting right now that maybe the optimal Leafs lineup what? is mm -hmm. Nylander at center. Fuck off. No. Stop. No. It's over. Why? Did this. It's over. What about Marner at center? What do you try him? 
Uh, that is okay. A huge mistake the Leafs made years and years ago is not getting Willie developed at center. When he was that's because Babs was like, "Well, I can't trust him right now. I can't trust him right now, and I'm trying to win every game. So fuck the long term health of this team." And like Willie still developed into an elite winger, like he's an elite player. Um, you know, it's hard to look at a guy who's scoring like Willie is. He's going to get a hundred points. Hopefully. And hopefully, and say you failed in his development, but he should have been a center. Mm -hmm. They developed him as a center with the Marlies. He came up with the Leafs. They put together this fun kid line and it was great, but there was always the talk of, well, at some point he's going to transition to center and they never did it. Mm -hmm. It'd be crazy if they like tried it in preseason for a couple of weeks and like really trained him on being a center. And then they went with it for a couple of weeks in the regular season and then see how that went. And then oh, abandon wait, it like right they away. They did that and it failed. They, yeah, we it did, did it this, didn't guys. We, earlier this season. When did we do it, Jesse? They did the proper thing of I don't giving you. him a run in practice and fake games. And then they tried it and it sucked. They were like, uh, it's they over. Were, <laughs> they were drunk at the beginning of the season. Some of the stuff they tried. Oh yeah, Kampf between like two like dynamic offensive players what <laughs> no like he's it, he's a black hole of offense yes. what are you doing yep. what are you unless you're scoring fourth line type goals which like he did the other night no that i i will forever begrudge the nice camp domi line as your third line right oh they're not getting depth scoring yeah that line stuck it sucks dude what are you doing the point about the willie center thing is that they tried it the hey we're just gonna throw this out there in the middle of the playoffs thing and see if that works they tried that it failed they tried the doing it the proper way mm -hmm. where you do it through preseason you get them worked up and then you do in the regular season and that also failed so this needs to put to be put to bed forever like it's it's over like in every instance the proper way and the wrong way it failed it it man Yarn croak there would be nice. It would be nice. Mm -hmm. Marner as a center it makes a ton of sense. He's never, but he's never done. He's it. never done it. Not or, at the professional level. Yeah. It, well. Yeah. yeah every, he, he everybody London, growing right? up when you're the best player in your team, you're the center, right? Yeah. And like, I feel like I'm sure he did with the Knights. I don't know that for sure, but I feel like he's never wanted to. Like it's never seen. It's never been a conversation. Isn't he exactly the sort of guy who should? But he seems like he'd be great at the position. Yeah, he has an <laughs> incredible vision for the ice, and he's good defensively. He's not very big. They've tried him at defense, <laughs> or before they tried yeah. him at center. Yeah. <laughs> That is they a have. thing so, that has right? happened in his career. They He's have, played God. more defense than center. But I feel like Marner would be a great center, man. We don't like. I still don't know what they do. I still, I I still have no idea what they do. And like, if if you do eleven seven, you have to take two guys out. I still don't know. It was funny to see. Did you see that they had dueling uh, articles written by Leaf reporters yesterday about this? No. Uh, Luke Fox did a uh, Ryan Reeves should be in the playoff Has lineup. Has to start, yeah. Uh, and then he did the playoff lineup. And then I forget who did the one for the athletic. I bet Jonas it was Jonas. I think it was Jonas. <laughs> it probably Had to have been. I'm sorry, Jonas. He did his what's the ideal Leaf playoff lineup. And I was like, all right, we're all ramping up. Dual playoff lineup uh, articles. I'm going to read these. That was fun. I want to see Jonas <laughs> and Luke in the boxing arena. I want to see them go at it. <laughs> or put, or set them up on NHL 24 with their optimal Leafs lineup and have to play each other and see who wins. Which which lineup? Yeah, is better? <laughs> which lineup wins? And you just sim it, <laughs> even if they if they can't play. What did you guys think about uh, Luke's? I guess like theory that Reeves has to be in I, the lineup. I don't know how you keep him out, and I think vibes matter. And I think we've ignored vibes for too long for numbers. Running and it, people the fuck over matters. Drew's shaking his head, but <laughs> Drew, what do you want to say? What, what, what is it, Drew? You don't put a defensive liability in your lineup. I don't care how many people he hits. It's, Have you cares? watched the Leafs? <laughs> the whole team's a defensive like, liability. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what, you, you're not pulling Reeves out of the lineup doesn't make them defensively a li non liability. There's no lockdown pair. Keith said to the media this year, we don't have a lockdown pair. You know why? Because they're blowing up the defense this offseason. Yeah. Like so. Uh, well, what, would you scratch Max Domi too? Yeah. <laughs> that guy's hopeless. <laughs> hopeless in his own end. I still love him. Yeah. Well, they, oh my God, he's hopeless in his own end. But uh, you know, I look at it and I think uh, I, I think that you know, as much as I respect the numbers, uh, the numbers have got us to the playoffs in the past. Yeah, and the numbers will still look good with Reeves in the lineup. Why? Because we have unbelievable talent on this team at the top end. I've never seen a player as defensively hopeless as Max Domi. Where I'm like, give him four million bucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then like, like a, and a huge extension, like, like yeah, for years. Do it. Keep him here forever. Yeah. 
But Steve, he sucks at. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Shut up. <laughs> Man, no, I know. It doesn't matter. Shut up. I've loved him. Loved him. Especially Me too. with Matthews. Me too. Horrible, though. Do you guys want to. Do you defense. guys want to read off Jonas Siegel's game one projected line? Let's go. Hit me. All right. It's Bertuzzi, Matthews, Marner. Oh, he took Domi off? That's weird. McCant. <laughs> <laughs> I got the impression he really liked him. Poor Jonas. He's like the nicest guy in the world. I know. I know. Crazy here. I know. <laughs> Not here to defend himself. Wait, this is Jonas? Yeah. He has Reeves in? Yes. Oh. oh yes. Let me let me get there. No. <laughs> let me re- okay. I, I read the first line. <laughs> Let's go to the end, that. Jesse. Okay. Brody. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the first line: Bertuzzi, Matthews, Marner. Second: McCann, Tavares, Nylander. Man. Third: Nice. No, I said what I said. McCann. You said McCann. I'm McMahon. still. I'm still reeling, Jesse. Yeah, I'm McMahon. not over it. McCann is going <laughs> to score another thirty goals this year. Uh, nice, Domi, Yarn Croak. Dewar, Kampf, Reeves, and then the D pairings are Riley, Labushkin, Brody, McCabe, Edmondson, Lilligren. I really hate Benoit not being there. Yeah, and I think mm. I think that uh, Jonas, um, listen, Jonas, let's talk, you and me. The lineup is fraudulent. What? Whoa! If you're trying to dress an optimal lineup, you're not dressing TJ Brody. End of story. Oh, we've all watched TJ Brody play, and and I've and the I've numbers back it up. I've liked them the last few. Games. Oh, you've liked them the last few games. What about the first sixty-seven? Well, you know. And by the way, uh, tonight, and I thought you'll find this funny, and I'm I'm going at Jonas because I think you'll find that funny. Um, the uh, the for the first time in in Leafs history, but not in Flames history. The Brody Giordano pairing will take the ice. That's tomorrow. That's oh, tar- sorry, tonight, tomorrow. Right? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay, really? They're playing tomorrow together. Together? Yeah. What the hell are the practice lines? Uh, well, let me pull them up. You did the forwards. Yeah. yeah we didn't sorry. get the defense. Sorry. Let me pull up Masters here, uh, because that's who you go to for your lines. Poor uh, Connor Timmy. He's he's out of the lineup. So you got right, and he should be. Stop it. What are we doing? Uh, 1.1 million, Kyle? I are know. we serious? I know. Uh, Ber- uh, so Riley Labushkin, <laughs> Benoit McCabe, as it should be, Giordano Brody, and then Edmondson Timmons. Oh. Okay. So Edmondson Timmons are obviously on the... And I think Edmondson's back. Wait, what, read it to me one more time. I wasn't, what? Riley, Riley Bush, yeah. Benoit McCabe, Giordano Brody. Benoit McCabe. Okay. See, I like Giordano Brody more than I like Brody in the, in the top four. First off, but Benoit McCabe, as much as... McCabe does cough up the puck more than I'd Who, like. Who's on the right? Brody or Geo? Boosh, McCabe, Brody. I'm out. Geo doesn't make the playoff lineup. No, like, he doesn't. I think, uh, like, who are we kidding ourselves? But, but yep. the positive step here is Brody is not put in a position to fail, which is top yes, four minutes. The, no, no, no. The position to fail is the right side. Edmondson. Edmondson will come in. I know. I, I am down with Brody on the left. I can't stomach him on the right. No. It's over. Well. It's over. Like everyone needs to be hurt in order for you to even try it. It's terrible. Well, where they're trying it tomorrow. Cool, great. Uh, what if it works out to be great? It won't. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, ah, that's Steve interesting. raises like the greatest point. Wow, ever. it won't. It won't. <laughs> so why were you guys going at also, me for the t- fucking half? TJ Brody's uh, TJ. Bro- well, that's why you experiment, right? Yeah. Well, you're I going like at me that. for TJ Brody what? when you know that he can't even play the right side. Well, and you're telling me that he plays the left side well? Come on. He can't move anybody. When it comes to... You see him in shorthanded situations with McCabe. McCabe moves guys in front mm-hmm. of the net. Brody's like... No. Mm. Hey, are you here? Hey. Can we both block him together? Oh, this is fun. Oh, I love... Adam, for anybody listening, Adam's hugging. Big, Steve. big hugs. For, oh, you smell good, by yeah. the way. I, I know. smell really good. Um, this morning. I think Brody Brody makes the playoff lineup. I think on the left side, it's perfectly fine. I think Brody Brody McCabe as the pairing in the playoffs, I'll be fine. I'll what? tell you, I'll tell you this. Game one, as lo- like in game two, things will change because they always do. Um, I think it'll be fine going into game one. Just keep them out of They'll the top survive. four. Just keep them out of the top four. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Well, so the other day in the LFR, I was I was uh, praising a lot of people put in positions by Sheldon Keefe who just wanted to see how they do, mm-hmm. and he's done that th- over the last couple of games. The player I forgot to. Uh, give us flowers was TJ Brody playing more PK time than anyone else. And PK's turned around. It might be the thing that keeps him in the lineup. I really don't know what they do. I really don't. I I think could they, I, my, my thing with the, the power or the penalty kill for the Leafs is once yarn croaks back, why aren't you dressing? Why, why aren't you putting three forwards in? I think their forward group is better than their defense group on, on penalty kill. 
Could you not have a yard Three throw? forwards? Why not? Well, you would need two guys net front, though. Okay. So put one. Who? I don't know. You've got, <laughs> you've got Dewar. You, 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 you've got McCabe. You've got yeah, McCabe. You've fine. got Yarn Croak. You've got Marner. No, Yarn Croak, absolutely not. Marner, absolutely. So not. McCabe. Here, here, here. McCabe's moving people. Here, yeah. But do, do you want to see how the Panthers and Lightning get rid of Yarn Croak and Marner? <sighs> okay. Like, <laughs> it, and, and you know what? It doesn't matter because they play so deep in their zone in the penalty kill. I it know. doesn't matter anyway. I can't stand the way they penalty kill. It's been good it, lately. Oh, lately ish. Also, come on. Uh, scouting the refs tweeted back at me the first goal in the Leafs Lightning game shouldn't have freaking counted. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> they, they don't they challenge fully it. missed a stoppage if they don't challenge it. Uh, is no. that a? I don't think that's a challengeable. I don't play. think it is either. Yeah, no, I don't think it's challengeable. No. They just so what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, is the Leafs took a penalty. Um, the Lightning get their extra attacker out there, but McCabe handled the puck after the penalty was taken. The play should have been blown dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I got one. I got a solution it. on the PK. Reeves. <laughs> ah, you want a guy who can move people? I don't think they if, do. If the Leafs keep leaving the point open, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw I something know. at my TV though. I like you watch so I and I did watch very closely the Boston Bruins and Nashville Predators, and I get that the Nashville Predators have a bit of a talent um disadvantage you know, to what Boston has. Yeah, maybe the Eastern media thinks so. Well, they do. Um, but when when uh, Nashville goes on the power play, the top two Boston forwards are all over the point, and it and it, I don't even know if Nashville what, got a shot. Fl on the Florida power play. killed the Leafs with that in the playoffs. And yeah. and the Leafs the Leafs you every all time over. watch them they'll be they'll be they'll be deep the forwards will be deep and then they they cannot gap up on those defense fast enough. They Carolina's don't, aggressive I don't care how fast Mitch Marner is he can't do that that's humanly not possible. Carolina's really aggressive. Florida's really aggressive. It's a way to be. Yeah. Yeah. Only only other thing I could think of is once everyone's healthy you take Dewar out. But man, has he been that great on the PK? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the PK's gotten better, so maybe. Is that the reason? I don't know. That's TJ Brody's the it's reason. It's up to Sheldon. Um, all right. What do you guys want? Do you have anything you want to say about the Tampa game? Like, it seemed like the Leafs were... No. Outplay I don't know. I didn't feel anything about I it. I think the main topic talking point for me coming out of Tampa game was the Joseph Wall situation in that he hasn't been good since he's come back from injury. Yeah. Weirdly, like, it's an anomaly, but it's also like, huh, how is that happening? You allow the first shot on goal... In a game for the third time in four goals, you allow that goal that shot to go in. Yeah. That's a weird stat. I don't know if it means anything, but Freddie doing Anderson that used to do that a lot. Three or four games can't be great. How about how about and just it doesn't matter how the shot was taken to stop it. It's the first shot of the game. You can't be allowing that three or four games. And I think we for like it's guaranteed lock it in. Samsonov has been fantastic since he's come back from his little minor league st rehab stint uh, for for his like mental state. Well, yep, uh, I think he's been great. <laughs> minor league stint where he spent zero minutes <laughs> in the minor leagues. Right. Yeah. Um, Samsonov is the starter, and I hope Joseph Wall uh, can play a little better so we are more confident in his backing up abilities. Yeah. Yeah, I would think he struggled. And I think it's fair to I, say. And I think you keep throwing him out there until he figures it out in right. the last few games. Like there's nothing on starting. the line. No. So yeah. just throw him out there. Keep get get comfortable. I'm not worried about Samsonov getting rusty on account of the thing that saved his season was him not playing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, throw wool out there until it works and give Sammy. Well, how many games are left? There's like six, seven. So six, give him seven. two. Two or three. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's a problem with them splitting it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even give Jones one. I don't know. Actually, that He's might on be the, the team. worst. Might, might, I would put Jones in the last game of the season, game 82. Honestly, play back to back Florida Tampa. <laughs> Martin Jones? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't let him take out your goalies. <laughs> Why not? Um, Why not? What, what are you risking one of your top two goalies in one of those stupid games for? Yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. Call I, up Abruzzi and Steves. Make that your top line um, with Holmberg or whatever. The uh, this is a it's a minor note, but it's still, still worth bringing up. It looks like the Russian and Belarusian players who've been banned for the CHL draft for two years uh, will be allowed back in this year. Yeah, that'll show them. Stop the war. Well, I know that's what everyone <laughs> pointed out. I was understand like, what was the freaking point? I understand why they did it. I do. Yeah, but, but like, you, if you're going to do it, you have to stick to it. Well, yeah, you're doing it or you're not. And the war is very much still happening. 
and now they're not doing it anymore. So what was the past two years for? It's odd timing. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Like it, it is pointless, mm-hmm. completely pointless. Um, it's a, it's an interesting thing because I, I obviously the the teams want to draft Russian players, but it is so hard to get players out of Russia now. I almost wonder how many of them will. Well, in agents, uh, I was talking to someone about this yesterday. Um, if you, well, an agent or a scout, if you want to go from Canada or the States Mm -hmm. to Moscow, you can do it, but you have to get your, uh, passport cleared with the consulate. Mm -hmm. Um, and you got to fly through like Istanbul. Yeah. Like you got to go to Turkey into Moscow or or Dubai or Dubai into Moscow or or something like that. It's a really, it's like even the back and forth is ridiculously complicated. I can't, I can't imagine how complicated it is to get like to immigrate uh, over and say, oh yeah, I'm going to play hockey. Well, imagine trying to process your passport in with the Russian government right now. How long what, like, where, was the Fedotov process? I would love two, to know. Two and a half, three years? Well, <laughs> yeah, if you look at it that way. But yeah. I, I mean from like, or or even or even someone like Kovalenko who, who came over for the avalanche. Mm-hmm. Like how difficult was that process? I wondered, I, I think if, if, you, if the Flyers were doing their job and Danny Breer seems like he has been, as soon as Fedotov was off of the boat and back onto ice. The boat? Well, he was, he was in the Navy. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant on his way to Philly. No, no. As soon as he was out of the Navy, I'm sure they were having those conversations. Like, okay, you got to play one more year. How do we, we're on this right now. How do we do this? How many, how many bags of money in paper bags do you have to drop off at the right (laughs) office for this to happen? Uh, I'm sure the NHL is all over that. (laughs) Just just a little winky face. Are you winking at them? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's never happened. Uh, I've been putting this off as long as I can. Um, but here we go. What's that, Adam? But Ian McIntyre of Sportsnet tweeted, "He's getting up." How bad the arena is when you go to Arizona? All right, everybody. all he did was tweet. Was Have like a good that. show. It was just a picture. No. Nope. Did you know that? By the way, sit down, sit what? down, because I'm not talking about it yet. Did talking you know? I'm talking about the fact that Mullet Arena has bench seating. Did you know that? No. I bet you didn't. I'm going to send this oh, up. So the wait, the What's arena that? they currently play in? That's right. See okay. now, Jesse. I want to. I'll listen to that. Throw this at you. Currently playing games in that building. Okay. Ian McIntyre, okay. who doesn't say boo about anything, like boo, one of the nicest boo. guys and a great reporter for Sportsnet, mm-hmm. and obviously Canucks fans follow him widely. Look at this picture, um, and he he finishes the tweet with, "But honestly, enough is enough, Uncle." That is the bench seating. So when you buy a ticket, and those tickets ain't cheap. Is that really how it is? That's oh, really how it is. The, listen that. to look at the Canadian media What's sweet? taking a photo. See his first, Ian doesn't. Ian's not like a uh, a hateful guy. So seeing Mullet oh. Arena for the first time reinforces hmm. what a disgrace this is for the NHL. Oh uh, no! What is he doing accurately that, showing what's happening? That's bleacher seating. No, I don't. I disagree. You know what? Go Yotes, go or however it goes. A woo. No, sure. no, I'm on board with. If you've ever been seating a bunch is good. of NFL stadiums, it's the same thing. Yeah, but yeah. that's not how it works in hockey, though. Yeah. NFL oh. stadiums. Why not? <laughs> well, it does now, I guess. <laughs> NFL stadiums seat 56,000, not 5,600, right? That's the difference. I think you can find 5,600 seats. What? Okay, what are you peeing? Oh, trough, obviously. That's, do you still pee in a trough at a Bills game, Drew, with the new stadium? Upper Bowl, yeah. Is Upper Bowl, yeah. Upper Bowl? Yeah. Oh, right. so for the... For the not pours, they give you a good old fashioned urinal. It's gonna be oil. good when they they tear that place down. <laughs> Is that happening soon? Yeah, they they had a new place. The they didn't put a dome on it. What? Like they, they Why? Built a, they're gonna build another outdoor stadium, and I thought it was ridiculous. Though. Are they gonna are they gonna hire fans at less than minimum wage to come right. travel them out again? No, like in this in this day and age, I don't know how you don't put a dome on something. I guess because Buffalo fans like relish. Yeah, no, it's a part right. of the culture, but also they built a team that's like dependent on throwing the ball through the air, and they can't do that when it's minus a hundred and it's snowing. Yeah, but why? What would happen? <laughs> ah, it's not good. <laughs> but snow prevents their already insane fans from hurting themselves. Yeah, because it gives them something soft to fall on. That's right. Oh. That's right. Okay. Hey, Jesse. It's like, anyways, wait, I'm I'm distracted. I have a solution for the Bills, though, Jesse. Yeah. What if they after 
uh, after kind of things have been sorted out after warm up, they just took it to a small room and deflated the football a little bit so they could get a better grip what? on it. Would that be okay? Could they do that? What? That wouldn't be cheating, right? That's not cheating. Why do you have something? Why are we worried Tom about Brady? that? No, I love Tom Brady. New, so I'm just, I just want to suggest that 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 wouldn't be cheating because we have a precedent that that's not cheating. Right. I don't know what agenda you have against the greatest football player ever. I love Tom Brady. I actually do. But that is. Yeah, cheating. that's straight up. Cheating. <laughs> I, love <Strutters. laughs> I, I just I distracted <laughs> from the bleacher seats in Arizona. OK, so, well, yeah, anyways. And so. So, OK, so th this was interesting. And this is where you can leave, Steve, if you want to. There was a rumor I don't, I don't yesterday know why I would. from AZ Sports, Arizona Sports, saying that Alex Murello was looking to find another owner for the team. That was the rumor. Mm -hmm. There is no again. I have not mentioned an arena here. I don't know. Him. No, he oh, he's leaving. He's leaving. Okay, they've walked out of the room. There's Steven. He's left. He's, he's good. He's good. But That's then, true. but then Jesse, the Coyotes no. came roaring back. Yeah. He came, oh, there he is. What are you doing, Steve? I'm kicking Drew out. You're kicking Drew out. Yeah. You know? Am I on mic? I'm kicking yeah. Drew out. You can. Hear. So which one? Which can? One, two, three, four. He wants to change the cameras. The cameras. Oh, look oh, at that. There you go. A great oh, oh, I like that. It's not a great. All right, do picture in picture. Okay, so every time I talk, I'm gonna go to camera three. What's where's the picture in picture button? Is it the top row? You can hit one of those, and it'll be. But you got to turn it on. Yo, we have so this, many this buttons. Is awful yeah, podcast. Buttons. No, this is great. No, why, okay. why are we doing this? I don't know. Here, and I just shut up and talk. All right, are we I, shutting I him off? This mic off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, so <laughs> it was so interesting. <laughs> you left. Yeah. yeah. You don't get, it's not your show if you leave. <laughs> so what I want to know is... You got to switch the cameras. Why? <laughs> was there any sort of coincidence with this rumor coming out and then all of a sudden the Coyotes, no. uh, a Coyotes social media roaring to life and showing a whole bunch of stock footage about how great this arena is going to so, be? So no, because yesterday was the day when the auction uh, bidding it went live. Like yes. the, the date was the official. Like, hey, the auction can be like discussed publicly now in Arizona. And now you did a video on it on the Jesse Blake Sports Report. You I think, did. You think they're staying now? Based on how these auctions typically go, it's going to be. I think it was sixty-two million dollars is the minimum but bid. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Yeah. yeah. The sixty-five is the minimum bid for this piece of land, ninety-two acres in Northeast Phoenix. And the way these typically go is they're seventy-seven percent of the time nobody opposes your bid like you you go against nobody why because nobody has 65 because million dollars these are giant almost a hundred acres of land and the people who want these lands are usually like an individual uh, like one corporation you're not usually fighting against somebody else so if morello alex morello has the money and it's also she does like, alex morello yeah he's got the money he's got the money yeah if if he has the money which he does and the plans are accepted by the city of phoenix the, i should make sure steve is still doing the camera stuff i'm doing a great job <laughs> You're doing a great job. I'm doing unreal okay. over here. Then it's like they just need to win the auction. And it looks like okay. they're gonna nobody's gonna go up against them. They'll win the auction. Next question. Yeah. They get the land. Mm -hmm. Then they have to get permits. Yeah. And that has to go through city council. Mm -hmm. And they're saying so Oh my God. So, so and then they would say, Jesse, that the the earliest that they could play there with no construction delay and no opposition from city council, 27, 28 which means they'd be at mullet for at least three more years after this one. Yeah, they were going to be at mullet for this year. So it's, I don't, I'm looking at this like you got two extra years in mullet, which is, I don't know, I think that's okay for what they're constructing because what they're constructing is a permanent home forever in Phoenix. And the city council thing is such, I think that's such a like distraction from like, hey, this is actually a really good thing because for this bidding process and the auction, it's about the money. You got to be the highest bidder, but you also have to just uh, show what plans you have, yeah, what you're going to put on the land. And they have and, a lot of, they have a lot of stock footage. And the, <laughs> and the people who are awarding the winner of the bid uh... have, to, have to look at the plan and say, yeah, those are cool. So okay. you're, you're also you're getting a thumbs up from the city. It's not like the city's like, I, I don't know what's going on this land. And then after you win, we're going to guess and see. No, they're already saying, yeah, this is cool. Plus, you won the auction. Let's go for it. And then you do the normal thing like with this any is the worst stadium, experience in my life. is you get the permits for everything. Right. It's very normal. It's normal. And it was <laughs> normal in Tempe, too. Yes, Tempe was a different situation though because they had to go through a public vote. Yes, which they didn't ever like. They were never the front runner to win that vote. This has just—it's just simply money, and you have plans to do something with your land. 
That's that's it's very simple. I am I am I I will continue to be, especially considering the source, which is the propaganda arm of the Arizona Coyotes organization. Mm. I will continue to be hesitant to celebrate. Yes. As somebody who's rooting for this until such time as those permits are approved. Yeah. And, think- and it's not because I I'm not taking shots at Craig Morgan here. I know that he's hooked into ownership. I know that he knows more than pretty much anybody else about this. <laughs> but the ownership always presents one side like this is a done deal. It's going to happen. The way it was presented to, to to all of us with Tempe. Thank you, Steve. Is the fact that uh, is that this is this is a slam dunk. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And of course it is because they're going to sell it that way. You have to. But you, you, I don't think we're getting the full picture here. You have to be skeptical of any news coming out of Arizona because of the how the tenure of the franchise has gone for their entirety of existence. Yes. All they have had throughout the entire, what is it, 25 years now that the Coyotes have existed is arena troubles. Yes. All, they've been back and forth. They miss rent. They got kicked out. They've moved. They Didn't can't, pay taxes. They can't do a deal with Matt Ishbia. Everything has been a problem. They're in a college arena. So being skeptical of the situation is completely valid and fair. Okay. Like that's, I feel Defo. Like that, that's completely justified. And until there is a shovel in the ground, nothing is 100%. But my, ba- my- I look at it as based on what this should be. It should be good to go. See, here's but what I think. Until the shovel's in the ground, nothing's obviously is 100%. We've presented two things to you here. Jesse has presented and, and did a deep dive on all this stuff, which I, I really appreciate. Um, I, yeah. I have also given you the rumor that Morello is looking for an mm-hmm. alternate owner. And here's what I think. Both are true. I think that this is the last stab. Mm-hmm. It is not 100%. And, but, oh, but although it's over 50%. Nothing, nothing is 100% but until I'll, it's done. But I'll give you over 50%. Sure. Okay, Maybe it's the last, last stab. Yeah. But my point is. Just like the he, last one. As a smart owner, if he can't get this done, he's got to have somebody to sell it to. Exactly. It would be. It would be so it would be such poor business to not do your due diligence in any outcome. This could go haywire and he could lose it. Right. Like the impossible could happen. He can lose it. And if he's sitting there with like, I'm unprepared, then you're a terrible business person. He needs to be prepared for every single situation. That's why you prepare for disasters because disasters could happen. So he's doing the right thing by looking and seeing who might want to buy it and move it to Salt Lake City. I have one more thing that I want to say. Gary Bettman's contract expires after this season three more years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's entirely possible that the Coyotes are still not in their new arena if Gary Bettman retires at the end of this, Mm -hmm. which he won't. But I'm just saying, can you imagine Gary Bettman retires? Don't throw don't throw it. And we still please do not throw a shoe at Don't throw it. I'm gonna throw it. (laughs) (laughs) Don't throw a shoe. I'm gonna throw it. Things could break. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm gonna throw the shoe. Got a microphone, there's a TV there. Can you imagine? I'm gonna throw the damn shoe. (laughs) Gary Bettman still doesn't have an arena in Arizona (laughs) under this contract. And what does that mean for his legacy? I could see that, like, if that happens, I assume it'd be construction delays and all that stuff, or like this doesn't go through. If this doesn't go through, they're in Salt Lake in uh, next season, right? Like that's and planning Arizona's expansion within the next five. Years. I could even see them play somewhere else next I'm not, year I'm if not this falls through. This okay, because like the Houston Arena exists, the Salt Lake one, the one where the Jazz play, it exists, but you have as as like um, as bad a sight lines as you had at uh, Barclays. Yep, like it'd be awful, but they could move it, you know. So like I could see them moving, but I I think I think I think it happens. Okay, now. Steve, come on back because we're going to talk about another relocation. No. But I do want to get Jesse's opinion on it because he follows baseball. The Oakland Athletics are now going to be called the Sacramento you can, Athletics. You can come back, Steve. You can come back. Yeah. Steve, come on. What's in it for me? No, I come on back. We're not going to talk about it anymore. No. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for not throwing your shoe. I do appreciate it. Yeah, that was... Thank you, Drew. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> by the way, everybody says that Sacramento, the Sacramento that Athletics... Good. That was good. ...should... Uh, um, should call them should, their hashtag should be sackball um, hashtag sackball because you know oh, Sacramento baseball yeah exactly but what do you think about this because they're moving to a stadium they're moving from a stadium which had 50,000 seats to a stadium with 14,000 they are going to move to Vegas eventually wait you said we were done talking about the coyotes <laughs> I know right yeah uh, and uh, we know that's going to happen in the late 2020s mm-hmm. right that's what the decade we're in, right? That Whoa. makes sense. The 2020s. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. Um, I'm wondering the roar in 20. what your thoughts are on the MLB commissioner and the MLB owners allowing this owner who already doesn't spend any money 
and demoted the stolen bases leader after the first three games of the season uh, because he was playing too well. Um, he wore a bracelet that supported a movement about like getting uh, firing the owner. Oh, yeah. And so the owner, there was this owner sucks. Yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy. I don't even know if they're conspiracy theories, but there's four players who wore these bracelets uh, from like an A's fan who's also involved in the like sell the team movement. And like, I hate the A's because everybody should if you're a fan of the team. And all of those guys got demoted. And everyone's like, they're good players and you're demoting them for this because you're a petty owner. It's yeah. Now, the athletics are now resigning themselves to the same thing the Coyotes did a few years ago, which is we're not going to make money and we're certainly not going to spend it. There is no minimum salary cap, though. Like the Coyotes have to spend on paper to a minimum. They never do, but they they have to. Right. Right. And by the way, this is what drives me nuts about anybody that gets upset about Vegas and Montreal and everybody else spending over $90 million and the least spending over $90 million on the caps in the 80s. Why? Because Arizona is completely allowed to spend less and nobody fucking complains about that. And I think that's ridiculous, too. And it's not just them. The ath- yeah, exactly. The athletics, though, obviously ingrained in Oakland. They don't feel like they can make the same money there anymore. Their owner is a real estate developer and has been for 25 years. Um what do you think about leagues allowing teams to intentionally not make money, especially in revenue sharing situations? So I I can't believe I'm about to do this. What the Oakland A's are doing is a million times worse than what the Coyotes are doing. They're Coyotes, trying. The Coyotes are trying. They're trying. Mm-hmm. They're trying. And, and like, I know they're in mullet. They are trying desperately to get out of there and it is not working and things have gone to votes and it was taken out of their hands and that's, I mean, shit happens. That's that's how it goes. And I said I would never talk about this, but um, no, what the athletics are doing is disgusting. Like, I mean, what the Coyotes at very least have is a passionate fan base that uh, will defend them and still want to cheer for them uh, and the situation. Whereas Oakland A's fans are just like, fuck you. Because you're, you're taking this team away from us, making them shit on purpose. From the MLB business perspective, you're not even trying to make money. It's a miserable situation. Ugh. Jesse, thoughts? It's it's a disgrace to like baseball, like what they're doing. Like professional the, sports. The other owners allowing this to take place has been such a like a bad stain on the way baseball is being run because you have an owner who is like the it's not like the Oakland a the city of Oakland wasn't willing to keep the team there it's just that the owner didn't get as much money as he wanted plus he thought there might be more money in Vegas so he purposely tanked the team and he purposely negotiated in bad faith with the um with the city of Oakland who they they were willing to give him a lease extension to stay at the Coliseum until they moved to Vegas and the lease extension originally proposed there was like 90 million dollars and you'll pay that down over your three Three years and then they're like okay um what about 60 million they're like here's a 30 million dollar discount and john fisher just continued to say yeah nah, made not, his mind up. not enough you know i don't care i'm gonna go to sacramento and play in this literally triple a ballpark that's not outfitted to be a major league baseball stadium and the fact that the other 29 owners in the league allowed this to happen i think is a disgrace to baseball now oh this is i'm asking this out of ignorance uh did they allow it to happen or did they have did any way to stop it happen I think when you have a privately run club that is just like 30 individual people, if you wanted to bully this man into not allowing this to happen, I think there's ways you could do it. What would you do? Just have 29 teams this year? No, I don't think you, wouldn't, you would never do I that. I mean, the NBA well, forced out an owner for making racial, racial slurs. Mm-hmm. And that makes, NBA. and that, well, I know, but that made the league look terrible. Mm-hmm. And so they booted him. And by the way, Donald Sterling was always garbage and they were looking for a reason to get rid of him. No, I think, I think the league thinks that in the end, when they're in Vegas, they're going to be happy and like, they're going to make so hand over fist because Vegas has turned into a great sporting market. So they're happy with this process unfolding this way. How many years in Vegas though, successful years do you have to have that will pay for the bad years that you've had in Oakland? It's going to be a while. Right? Because like Oakland fans have, st- have flat out stopped coming. Mm-hmm. You go, you go to, you watch the games at Oakland. Oakland used to be one of the hotbeds of baseball. Uh, like you, you watch like some of the old like Jays, A's, 
playoff series with like Dennis Eckersley and his weird arm. And like they're they're full to the rafters. People were nuts about this team. Dude. And now it's maybe a couple thousand that are showing up. Those home games are gonna suck. Well, it's like COVID, right? They're like COVID home games. Yeah, no, no, no. Season. I mean home games in Vegas in the summer. Oh, they'll have a dome. <laughs> I oh, hope they oh, a dome. oh, they will? Yeah, they'll have a dome. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, yeah, Jesus, the Raiders, that's miserable. The Raiders have a dome. Yeah, oh. yeah. At Allegiant Stadium. No, you couldn't um, possibly. The one thing no. that people in Vegas have been talking about is how they don't want this team. Really? Why not? Because, because they don't like the owner? They don't want this owner who's bringing in this ball club that frankly sucks right now. And he has been a terrible owner for decades of the Oakland A's. And they're like, why would we want this stupid, shitty team with this terrible owner? Like, give us the they want they want the expansion franchise. That's what Vegas wants. Vegas fans of baseball. Like, that's what they want. They want their own team there. That's why they care more about the Golden Knights than the Raiders. Well, and. You know, everyone is has looked at Vegas as this literally oasis in the desert, and they're going to make millions and millions uh, uh, on this market that has been a neglected sports market. It's not that anymore. No, it's started. It's exploding really fast. Like you would have to go back probably decades and decades to find a sports market that got an NHL team, an NFL team, and an MLB team all within a decade. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's a lot. And they're going to get a basketball team in the next 10 years, you know? That's LeBron so wants much. to own that one. That's and, so much. And, like, you don't even throw in there their WNBA team, the Las Vegas Aces, just right. won the championship this past season. Their big season. franchise. You know, and right. they were they were in there first, I believe, before the uh, Golden Knights. I think and, you're right. Yeah. And, yeah, the, the sports market there has exploded, and they have their teams. They don't want this retread Oakland A's yep. team. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of, like... Uh, the Vegas fans, which uh, probably like I'm just trying to summarize the majority of well, fans that I've Knights. read about online, you yeah. know, they love the Golden Knights. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's such it. I think it's an awful situation. Like, I don't know how you look at it any other way than they're doing a disservice to Major League Baseball. The owner's pretty easy to root against. Yeah. And I, I, I think I think they're right. I think they want because here's the, the, what they know is that the owner's going to come in and still not spend money. Mm -hmm. And so like Bill Foley needs to buy this team. That's what needs to happen. No. Bill Foley needs to buy the team. Bill Foley needs to buy yeah. the A's. Bill Foley, owner of the Jet Golden Knights. You should just buy them, and then you know that you're having a good owner. You can't sell a team that's not for sale. How, that's why does this guy want this team? No. Alex Morello. John Fisher likes having his baseball. Alex yeah. Morello buys the A's, and that's where the Coyotes play now. I, I've, I found the whole situation. It's just so... Um, like you, I, I don't know how well, you... Look at that and 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 go like this is the tact we're going to take. You sat in a boardroom with a bunch of people, probably guys, and you're all like, "Here's the plan. Let's be let's be as horrible as we can on the way out." After forty or fifty great years in Oakland, do you think there was a ton of listening? Yeah, there's probably a lot of guys there. Like, if I say if I speak up, my salary's gone. So, are we bringing up the what's going on at MLSE? Because I feel like it sort of ties in. Well, MLSE is a different story. It is a different story. Like Michael Grange wrote something. And I've mentioned this, by the way. On Grange the show. and Friedman. Oh, Friedman did one too? They, they, no, no, they, they tag teamed on oh. it. Yeah, that's why it was like so good. It's so <laughs> two great heads coming together, <laughs> making a good fantastic story. Yeah. So Larry Tannenbaum, who owns 20%, used to own 25% or whatever it was. And he's told five, sold 5% 5 to Omers. He had 25 and he sold 5. Yeah. 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 So... Yeah. And and Rogers and Bell tried to block that because they didn't want anybody else being in. They want mm -hmm. there's a there's a there's a, a corporate war coming up here. And what's going to happen is you've got um, Larry Tannenbaum will be allowed to be bought out of his shares. In fact, that's the agreement is 2026. He'll be bought out. Mm -hmm. He is trying to spin off his own company, which is called Kilmer Sports, to buy the WNBA team that Rogers rejected at Maple Leaf Sports getting. So mm -hmm. he's going to take money from Bell and Rogers to create his own sports group empire to compete against them which yeah. is why they didn't want him selling his shares and it's, and it's not just the WMBA group because once he sells those shares he's going to be they said it's going to be north of like 1.5 billion dollars so yeah. he's going to be competing in the i might buy an nfl team with another group you know i can yeah. throw money into the, a larger group or if i want to buy a baseball team in another market i can an expansion of, nhl team yeah that's, like, that's enough he could do that and then have like 600 mil left. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, right. And there's rumors of uh, first off, there's rumors about that Oakview group project in Hamilton yep. about that hockey arena. That's not an NHL arena, although it can fit an NHL team. It's 18,000 people or whatever it is. 
Oh, but it's not an NHL arena. It's interesting. Let's not even talk about it. And then um, there's rumors about Rogers wanting to spin the Blue Jays off, like Ed Rogers wanting the Blue Jays to not be a part of Rogers corporate anymore and just be his team, mm-hmm. his so toy. Th- and so that that means that in this market, we go from effectively a monopoly to a three-way competition for sports dollars. It's MLSE who own five teams plus the Blue Jays who are owned by one of the owners of MLSE. Yeah. <laughs> so they essentially own all the teams except for like Toronto PWHL and maybe the Rock. I don't think they own the Rock. <laughs> I don't think they, they don't. own the well, Rock. Well, the Rock play in Hamilton now too anyway. So. Oh, for God's sake. So, uh, yeah, you basically go from that to it's going to be like a three-horse race potentially. Yeah, cool. Now, the reason I, I thought these two stories related a little bit is because uh, I had a, a bunch of people text me yesterday like, what does this all mean and why are they splitting up? And I'm like, well, because they're all billionaires or people who work for billionaires. And I think there's an element of never, ever being told no or accepting no. And um, there's a lot of stubborn people in the same room. And I think they're all probably sick of each other. And that's why. Mm-hmm. They've also had plenty of contentious negotiations over the last little while. Because they're the, stubborn. The the selling of those shares, they tried to take them to court, and then it just kind of fizzled out, and everything went through. The Masai Ujiri contract was like heated Miserable. in the boardroom because the Rogers side of it didn't want to pay him the money that uh, they eventually did end up paying him. Because and then Larry Tannenbaum, who is the the third guy in, is the tiebreaker, and he said, "Yeah, I give him the money." And it's gonna be fascinating to see what happens with MLSE when they don't have. Have the tiebreaker well and, and and two people going head to head and how many stalemates are we getting well and that's scary if, uh, if you're a fan surprised that rogers honored the contract I very think, scary i think that there is going to be uh <laughs> there's going to be a um uh an issue if you're a yep. leafs fan worry about 2026 yep because if there's a stalemate at the top um we're we're going back to the pension plan days where nothing gets no done. and so no! what i think will end up happening <laughs> One of these cable companies will buy out the other one of their shares. And and I would imagine that is a part of that buyout process. And I am completely speculating here yeah. that they give the rights to the other one to bring another NHL team to Southern Ontario. But Adam, Whoa. that process Whoa. of I think that's eventually I think that's eventually what's going to happen is they won't be able to work together. But I think to get to that point, they're going to try it. And it's going to be awful because they're yeah. going to try and work together as 50-50. And when they're arguing about something they want to get done, you know what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. They're nothing not, we're going to prove. Nothing is going to get done and there's going to the growth is going to stop. Well, I, this is all, like we said, speculation. I'm just a warrior in this situation because I look at Bell and I look at Wa- Rogers and I say, there's nobody in there to just break up these two people fighting. They're just going to butt heads and nothing's going to move. I would love it if, well, Omer's, if they hold on to their shares... Could be the tie break, <laughs> uh, which is hilarious. Aren't they um, uh, 5%. Team, Teamsters Union? Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So I would love it if Larry just went wild card and sold it to some tech billionaire or something like that. Like, dude, let's get crazy, Larry. Like, right. I know that they've got some sort of deal in place, but, um, you know, uh, to me, this is these these corporations don't function to um uh, oh, the sentence still, is still going. They don't function oh. to um, <laughs> to compete. They function to eliminate competition. And it's a really different fundamental way of looking at business because they're, all of their money goes towards facilitating the fact that they have a unique business position in Canada, which is they are one of the 10 to 15 corporations that essentially run this company or this country. And from a business perspective, it doesn't really make sense to be more competitive. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to lobby the government. And that's what they do. And they would probably sit in this room and agree with me. I'm not like insulting them. This is this is how they run their business. So what happens, though, as we saw with the pension plan years, is competition of the team becomes less of a priority and th- or, or any any of these teams. Now, the one thing I will say is that Rodgers has enormous experience with one of their teams doing really well and the entire stock price shooting through the roof, which was the Jays' runs in 15 and 16. When the Jays were in the playoffs, Rodgers' stock went berserk, and they love that. So that it could be the, that could be the saving grace oh, here is that... Canada fell over itself to give Rodgers money. <laughs> they did. Oh, the tickets were crazy and whatever. And, and Remember so, Tooney Tuesdays? Yeah. So I, all I want to say is that 
it could it could be uh, you know it could be a thing where um uh there is a, a a fight at the top i think that in the next two years they'll be negotiating for 2026 i think the negotiations have already begun and they're already talking about it and it's a question of frankly to me the the x factor here is ed rogers because you know mirko bibich who is the head of bce um is a he's a guy who's there for now when you're a ceo you're there for now when you're the owner of the company and, and, you know, Tony Staffieri is the CEO of Rogers. Tony is Ed's right-hand man. That is a family company. It's a family business. So what's Ed want to do? What Ed wants to do will determine things because Mirko may not be here in four years. He's a CEO. They come and they go. So that is the, that's the X factor. And I feel like to me, Ed's a Blue Jays fan. We know that huge Blue Jays guy. He may want to just go. I, I think I'll take the Blue Jays and Sportsnet and spin off my own company. That's what I think. The happen. timing of the hockey rights is very interesting. With the timing of MLSE and their show, the buying out of Larry Tamanabom, like that's all going to come to a head as well. And if it leads to two NHL teams in Toronto, like fuck yeah, <laughs> I'll well, go through a little bit yeah. of pain for that. Well, I mean, as a Canadian sports company, a okay. Um, uh, I think it's very interesting that that rumor about Amazon. Um, getting Monday nights mm -hmm. the NHL uh, comes out basically a what is it less than a week uh, apart from this rumor. Mm -hmm. if, it's going to be an explosive time. If Amazon likes hockey enough, or one of the other streaming services, which we've been telling you for over a year now, have been are coming. They're coming, mm -hmm. and they're taking the rights. and And Rogers and Bell can fight all they want. The, the streamers are gonna are they're gonna get it. If they like it enough, why just stop at the rights? I uh, and like, why wouldn't you call Larry Tannenbaum and go, hey, this is one of the by the way, MLSC is a top 10 sports organization in the world in terms of value and profitability. Yeah, they own everything. Why <laughs> wouldn't Amazon just call Larry and go, whatever they're paying you we will double it because money's nothing to us. Adam, I think you're thinking about this like a normal. I think you're thinking about it like a normal slash poor. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. if if uh, yeah, Amazon likes that. No, 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 no. Liking something is something you do in the present. Mm. They're a billion gajillion dollar company. They're already five years in the future and they're simply implementing a plan. It's got nothing to do with whether or not they like it. They're going to like it because they have infinite Scrooge McDuck money. They're going to force it to work. So do you think they're, they're going to buy it? I think they'll buy into Canadian franchises. Yeah. Honey. And American I, ones. I don't, I don't know if there's rules around that. Like, I don't know if ESPN could buy a part of the Bulls. Rodgers like. and Bell bought the Leafs. Right. That, I don't know. Interesting. I mean, they own the sports networks. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can. Yeah. I Well, I think what's the NHL going to go, you know what? You know your money? It's not the same <laughs> as his money because you own too much. Right. The NHL is going to be like, great. Let's go. Bring mm -hmm. it. We love that. Mm -hmm. And I think... I think it makes a ton of sense uh, for like, wouldn't you be like New York is owned by James Dolan, like the whole Madison Square mm -hmm. Entertainment the city. Yeah. Well, the Madison oh. Square Entertainment or Madison MSG Entertainment, whatever you call it. Um, one day he's going to want to sell that because he's just he's a guy and he's there to make money. He wants mm -hmm. to play in his band. Uh, who's going to buy it? To me, it's the companies like Apple. It's the. It's the um, Middle Eastern monetary funds that are buying up all the sports. Like you got, you know, Live Golf and you've got the, you know, Liberty Media has already received like crazy offers for Formula One. Like Formula One's supposed to be valued about 20 no, billion. I'm sure they're going to stop at golf. Liberty was like, I think they came in, they offered them an outrageous amount of money and Liberty was like, no thanks. Like all of these, this is all, this is the next generation of billionaires, Happening. right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. I I wonder because, yeah, like you said, Rogers owns a part of a team in the league, but also owns the NHL rights. Yes. I, is that that's like the only scenario where that exists, right? I think so. I don't know I don't... of any because in most other because you got to have the individual, right? Yeah. It, it, most corporate. I know in the NFL, you have to have an individual owner and the NHL. Baseball too. wants that, too. That about... Rogers is one of the only corporate owners. Yeah. And that's the why players? they want to flip it to Ed. Don't don't the Flyers have like a TV and team Comcast? Yeah, yeah. Comcast? the Snyder's Comcast owns and them. I, are the Snyder's even involved anymore? The Flyers? I don't, yeah, I don't no, know. No, but it's the, yeah, it's the know. Comcast people. But they don't like own. Oh, I guess they own like their into like teams own their TV rights. Obviously, mm -hmm. like they'll own like local markets. Like the Yes Network is owned by the Yankees and that sort of stuff. But I guess I guess yeah, it makes sense if I Amazon. Feel, I just feel like a child. Like like yeah. when we talk about money. 
this much money that large yeah. much power i just feel like a baby yeah so the comcast spectator was actually for, uh was started by ed snyder mm -hmm. so in philadelphia so yeah the the snyder family is still involved <laughs> yeah, yeah so they re they broadcast <laughs> oh, the games the and they own the team uh, right right so wow. but in uh, terms yeah. of like the league rights it's interesting it is interesting. like i don't know i don't know yeah like, imagine imagine comcast bought the nhl rights from tnt you know like that's what we're yeah. talking about it's crazy yes yeah, true didn't uh, Disney own the Anaheim Ducks and that's ESPN? They did. Is it not? Did Disney own the Ducks? They oh, did for a bit. Yeah. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah they did. They How did do you think an NHL area. team got their own show? <laughs> their own movie. They got their own cartoon. Nice. Yeah, yeah so it was it's a great cartoon. Uh, yeah, fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, John Fisher, the guy who owns the athletics. Where is he? What do you think he did for his money? Uh, ice cream. Just okay, like Adam, what's your Jacobs. guess? I'll give you a hint if you want to redo your guess. Uh, he's a Nepo baby. Oh. oh. <laughs> so he inherited it. What do you think uh, his daddy's business was? Oh. Um. Um, well, okay. So how old is John Fisher? 62. So that means his daddy is much older. Yeah. Doris and Don. Oh, man. Those are guys that had kids in their early 20s. Oh, Doris and Don. If your name is Doris, you had like like that generation. They're like, hey, we're 19. We're really old. Let's he get married. owned a train company. I'm going to say. Okay, that's a good guess. I, that's a really good guess. Yeah, I think <laughs> shit, I think real estate because I think real estate begets real estate. So I'm going to say he developed homes in the California era in the post-World War II. Doris Fisher and Don Fisher are the founders of Gap. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Wow. And, and John Damn Fisher. Damn it. I was going to say clothes. And ah. John Fisher is their son. <laughs> wow. I was going to say like hot cotton suits, but wow. John Fisher has the most fuck you money to ever exist. <laughs> and he sure won't spend it. Yeah. Wow. And he doesn't want to fucking fund his baseball team. The gap. Just gap. The air. Of Gap? <laughs> yeah, he is the heir of Gap. And he, you know, Gap's been around for so long. This man is 62, and he didn't even found it. Like, it's his parents who found it. I didn't it. know Gap wow. was that old. Gap, Gap's I had no idea. They, like, this this man is just so much. What is it, Drew? Do you know a lot about the what, Gap? What do you think the Gap is currently worth? Oh, it's been it's been on a slide right now. It's been a long. It's been it's, it's been a rough few years. What? Mm -hmm. uh, Four what? billion dollars. Nine point one billion. Wow. Yeah. And that's down. And that's down. <laughs> that's down significantly. Gap was founded in 1969. Gap wow. is more valuable than all of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. It's the Gap. Yeah. <laughs> holy shit. Anyway, yeah, but they so, sell like baby clothes. Like, holy shit. The, the guy who is the heir to Gap clothing doesn't want to spend $100 million on a baseball payroll. <sighs> so... Fuck, fuck the A's. Yeah, dude. He doesn't want to spend half that. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh they get up to 50. You could still, like, he doesn't want to pony up to even have a broke-ass team. No. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be the bottom. The brokest asses team. <laughs> there is a wow. point where not spending money actually costs you, too. Like, the, yep. you can't tell me the A's are worth more than they were 10 years ago. No, he's hurting the value of his own uh, asset. But has he to be. He doesn't care. Or maybe they are worth more because of inflation, but like they could be worth a lot more. Does yeah. that make sense? No, 100%. And by the way, they're saying with this new place where the A's are going to play, 14,000 seats, no place for like usually they have places for moms and kids and things like that. Mm -hmm. No places for that. No like no luxuries. Like it's literally like the Coyotes. Like nobody's going to want to play there. Mm -hmm. And I think they're okay with that. Yeah, that's their whole goal here. Yeah. Oh, and if you're wondering, uh, the gap is just uh, Old Navy as well. Like the gap, the gap Holy. Inc. owns old, old Navy. I had absolutely yeah. no Same idea. Same with uh, Banana Republic. They're all one brand. <laughs> so, and they're owned by John Fisher. <laughs> Cucumbers are six dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. Holy, holy we can talk about Drew's team. I love talking about ownership. Yeah, let's talk about Drew's, Drew's team. team is owned by Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, which one? Uh, the, one, one, one of the oh, the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, they're owned by Walmart. They're married in. Yeah, the, well, the dude is married. He is his. He married the uh, heir of Walmart. the heir of Walmart. Yeah, can you imagine Mrs. Walman? The pressure of <laughs> dating a, a Walton, like yeah. that is, that's crazy. Yeah, don't fumble the bag. Holy What's your first date like? How do you impress somebody? <laughs> like, no, that's he, nuts. But he also comes from that type of money, right? So, like, they're, yeah, they're the same level. Yeah, same strata. No, I yeah. thought they dated the poor's. <laughs> 
I don't date. Hey, horse. listen. There's lots of movies where Princess Bride. <laughs> like this is yeah. this is wild. Tale as old as time. Yeah, yeah for Stan, sure. Stan Kroenke Mar- uh, bought bought St. Louis Rams, moved them out to L.A. Owns the Avalanche. Owns the Denver Broncos. Like, oh. and married the Walmart lady. <laughs> he's, he's di- different tiers of life people live. It's fascinating. Yeah. Wow. Anyways. One day. One day what? People, what are your thoughts? <laughs> One day what? <laughs> One day we'll be billionaires. Yeah, okay. Off of screaming into a camera and we really got to diversify. <laughs> oh my god. Stan, Stan Cranky owns uh Arsenal. Yeah. Uh the LA Rams, Denver Nuggets, Colorado Avalanche, Colorado Rapids, Colorado Mammoth, Los Angeles Gladiators, mm-hmm. LA Gorillas, Screaming Eagles and the LA Rams. Yeah. Just Arsenal alone is probably worth all those teams. Oh yeah. But Arsenal would be the best holding I would think he would have. How much of Arsenal does he own the whole thing? Uh yeah, he's CEO and owner, so Wow. You know, I heard an idea once. It's a radical leftist idea, but it's when you hit a certain uh, amount of money, they just send you a plaque that says you won capitalism. (laughs) And you're not allowed to have more than that. (laughs) Like, what's the... In theory, could what... In theory, one day someone could just own everything. In theory. In theory. I mean, based on how human history goes, I think that person would be found and killed. Mm-hmm. But in theory, absolutely, you could just own everything. Sure. And I feel like uh, we're kind of getting to ah, that. There's way more consolidation that needs to happen before that time. Oh, yeah. Oh, just, we'll be gone. It'll you, just be called the company. <laughs> the, uh, the story of Stan Kroenke and Ann Walton is a fascinating one to me because they, they met in Aspen. But Stan Kroenke's, Stan Kroenke's business, like where he originally made his money, was building shopping centers. And he he met Ann Walton, and what is she? What was she the heir of? Walmart. So he built his shopping centers, and then his wife put uh, the stores that her family owns into these shopping centers, and they've built the one of the greatest American empires ever. And then his new passion in his later second half of his business is owning sports teams, and- which happens to be the place to invest your money. Yeah, so he na- the second half of his business ventures, he nailed the the, the I think it's the most uh, besides real estate, it's the one place you put your money into that's grown the most over the last 20 years. And and it's funny sports, sports ownership. Because it wasn't like that. No. 20 years ago, it was not like that. even 10 years ago, like okay, it's going to sound ridiculous, but uh there was a uh o- former owner of the Sacramento Kings who was a real housewife. And they sold they sold that team because they, they almost moved the team because of an arena issue. The like, arena was old. Like from the show. From the show. <laughs> she was on the show and they're like, we're going to move the team. Like, it's mm-hmm. crazy. And uh, and there was like security issues with her going to games because because they were worried that fans were going to like oh, throw shit. stuff at her or whatever. Anyway, so they she ended up selling it to a tech billionaire, but she sold it for like $500 million. Can you imagine? That's 2010. Can you imagine... An NBA team going for less than two or three billion now. Yeah. So she just held for ten years and even invested in a stadium. She'd be worth four or five billion dollars today. Yeah, that's why you have owners like Al Davis and Jerry Jones in the NFL who bought these teams when they were worth pennies. Yes. Because you could just do that. It's like, oh yeah, I'll take an NFL franchise. I have a little bit of money, and now they're literal billionaires, and they don't do any other business this is they're just jerry jones's business is owning the cowboy yeah and he's a billionaire just off of that what? because of how much the asset has grown in 50 years of course uh, sorry i'm what just, is it i'm just putting a same like, with robert Kraft too right he owned he owned the parking lot and he owned the stadium yeah and then eventually was basically able to take he's just like in that at that time i had a couple million bucks i'm just you know? uh, <laughs> just putting a reminder in my phone to go buy granola bars for the office at giant tiger <laughs> <laughs> but today's money you can't get in the door unless you are a billionaire of and course there, there's a fight happening in minnesota right now over the timberwolves because the timberwolves A-Rod. owner agreed to sell the timberwolves for it's like um i forget i think it's like a billion dollars but the team right now is worth like 2.5 you know mm-hmm. but he already agreed to send the, to sell at this price and he wants to take back his sale 
So he's Ooh. he's accusing the new owners, A Rod and his buddy, who actually has the money in the gr ownership group, of missing payments of the de deadline to buy the team, so that he can take back the sale because he like sold his house for five hundred grand, but it's worth two point five million. You know, so he's like, I don't want to sell it anymore. So he's trying to get back his money. You know what's crazy? You <laughs> tried to put it in like normal people terms, and that is still so much money. <laughs> it's still goofy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you know, just a normal 500 mil. Like, uh, it's crazy. Gee. It's crazy. Uh. Absolutely crazy. And that's why a guy, and this brings it back to Larry Tannenbaum, the WNBA is exploding. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? So, and, and what they're, you know, and it, it's going to cost you 100 million bucks to get a franchise. Mm -hmm. And you own the rights to Coca-Cola Coliseum because Larry Tannenbaum has the licensing rights to Coca-Cola in Canada. Don't know if you know that. What? That's, what? that's why it's called Coca-Cola Coliseum mm -hmm. now. So, oh so he's going to put them in, in that place until they can build another place. What, are they going to kick the Marlies out? Well, I think they'll just or have charge to charge them rent. They'll have to, they'll have to stop the boat show and the great Royal Canadian tattoo from, from going in there. <laughs> <laughs> the boat show is the worst thing that ever happened to Toronto. I love the boat show. Why, why boat must, show why must every year you put the Marlies on a 42 game road trip? Because I need to surf <laughs> on the Marlies ice surface. It's the worst Adam, thing that ever happened it. to hockey. I did it on TV. It's the worst thing that ever happened to AHL hockey. And Adam Wild on television was the first person one year to I was wakeboarding and to skiing. wakeboard in Coca-Cola. I, I was the squirrel at the end of the That's newscast. why he likes it. <laughs> I was the water skiing squirrel at the end of the newscast. I think, I, I think so. So Larry's doing so. What Larry's doing here yeah. is he's taking Kilmer Sports and he's buying in low for a hundred million dollars, low low price of hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. and and in ten years yeah. he's ten xing his investment, mm -hmm. and he'll be eighty, and he's got you know there's an heir to the Larry Tannenbaum fortune. He'll be eighty. Yeah, he's like going to be 70. He's going to be 80 when that new, uh, when the buyout happens. Oh, he'll be he'll 80 be, then. I think that it times with his birthday in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 79. You're right. Okay, so he'll be 90. But uh, but yeah. In 10 years. Yeah. In, in 10 years. Yeah. Yep. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the guy on YouTube who does, uh, the floor is lava. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. It's Danny something. It's Drew, do you know who I'm talking about? What are you, uh, he's a kid's YouTuber and he's massively successful. And sometimes I think I've done well. And then every now and then we will see the view total and my wife will go, why didn't you get into kids videos? Kib, kib boomers? No. The floor is lava, lava song for kids by the kib bloomer. Kib boomers. Blip, 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 blip. Okay, so do you want to This is the song you're talking about. Yeah. It, oh, no, yeah. I'm thinking of two different people. So there's the oh. floor is lava. That is the video. Yeah. But then there's also... Uh, Pull down your mic. No, not oh, Ryan's Secret Toys. Mouth. What do you say? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was asking if he was thinking of Ryan's Secret Toys. The kid just opens toys and he's made like billions of dollars. Oh. Yeah. He, he runs around uh, like, and there's graphics on the screen and he wears like a pilot hat. I don't know. I don't this know. This is really deep. Worth it. Or like yeah. blippy. Where, where, what are we looking for here? <laughs> what, what we're where looking are you for? Going with here, it? No, no. Like Can we pass this one by and go to the end? No, no. I, sometimes right, so I, I feel like I'm three successful. People and then have SL ever had goes, 100 okay, assists. you fucking go. It's Bobby Orr, <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, and now Connor McDavid. There's going to be four? There's going to be four now. Wow. Yeah. So, sorry. Every time you feel like you're successful, there's somebody. <laughs> My wife reminds me I'm not. Right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Do you want to know how Larry Tannenbaum made his money? Uh, I am going to say buttons. He is the... <laughs> he sold so many buttons. Uh, it's a multi... He, uh, it's Kilmer Van Nordstrom Company Limited, a multifaceted civil engineering co uh, company who operated... Uh, they built ready, milk, uh, ready mix concrete, uh, heavy construction, Button. piping, manufacturing, paving... They built the Toronto Zoo. Wow! Ah! Wow! He also owns. Oh, I his, like it. I like him now. Through through uh, through Kilmer, uh, he owns. Oh man, there's so much. He also helped build the first terminals at Billy Bishop. Nice. Um, he owned CUC Broadcasting, which was Canada's fifth largest cable company that was purchased. Uh, like I told you, he acquired the Coca-Cola bottling and distribution rights for all of Canada. Give him a plaque. Um, yeah, like, do you see what I'm saying? Uh, and then he has his private equity also owns um, lumber companies, 
Uh, Canadian franchise franchisees of Five Guys Burgers and Blaze Pizza. Love Five Guys. Um, Blaze Pizza. Blaze Pizza. Yeah, like Blaze this, is good too. Man, they're like it's it's crazy. He started. Uh, he spearheaded along with I think the what was the broadcasting family that was involved. He spearheaded the Raptors coming to Toronto. He's the part of the merger. One. Uh, not Bitov, the other one, broadcast family. They're uh, no, but he, standard broadcast. Steve, Steve's right about that. The they, Bitovs were involved. They yes. were involved too. Oh. He's the only uh, remaining remaining member of the original ownership group of that team. So it's he's going to be when we lose him in 2026 out of MLSC, It'll be a sad day. Because yeah, it's yeah. Original owner of the Raptors. And yeah, all fun. that from buttons. And he's um, also a fan. Oh. Yeah, he's a billionaire that's a fan. Yeah, he's the one who gets yeah. the trophy. Who's down there? You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's fun. Um, before we go here, uh, Steve shirt. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, Steve, uh, let's talk about this a little bit here. Yeah. We've got um, uh, this is a uh, this is really, really cool. So this is the ALS Superfund. Uh, go to ALS Superfund dot CA. A, um, a listener reached out 17 years old. Jason. Jason. And his father has ALS. He said, I'm from London, Ontario. Most of my family have been lifelong Leafs fans. And I've been watching LFR since 2020. And I thoroughly enjoy Steve's sense of humor, insight, knowledge, and opinions on the Maple Leafs. Also enjoy SDPN's podcast in short forms. Uh, main reason I'm writing out is my dad, who is 55, was diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, it kills your motor, uh, motor uh, neutrons. Uh, which in turn cause muscles to waste away until they are paralyzed. Uh, 80% of ALO, ALS patients survive about two to five years after their diagnosis. Um, and the diagnosis itself can take a year. There is no cure. Uh, my dad, Matthew, is a strong advocate for ALS and started a t-shirt campaign and works with ALS Canada. Uh, and it would be great if you guys could support. So go to alssuperfund.ca or alsactioncanada.org. And we would really appreciate if you would uh, donate. And Jason's family does not own the Gap or the bottling rights to Coca Cola or the bot. So like buttons, donations are appreciated. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we we wanted to shout you out, Jason, and shout out your family. And uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, and it's- his brother Colin, so he doesn't get jealous. Oh, his brother Colin. <laughs> yeah, he, and how could I forget that? He anyway. So yeah. Anyway. Um, and then lastly, lastly, uh, we need to shout out Steve for his streams. Yeah. Because we have a little promo that was made by Rob Lendrum. So, Shout him out. That's all you want to say? Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to play it. I thought you were going to show the thing. <laughs> I, don't know, I thought you had a little bit more on who Rob is oh, or anything. I don't uh, know. Worked I don't with know. him at Sportsnet. He's an <laughs> animator, director. I thought you want to thank Rob. Button sales. I guess I could play it and then and, you can go into Okay, it. so we didn't ask him to make this. It right. was just like, hey, I was bored and I made this. So take it away. Nope. Already started. There was no sound. I'll restart it. There was no sound. Here we go. Playoffs in Toronto. Let's go. I'm streaming every game this series on SDPN. It's about the Stanley. You gotta believe. You gotta feel it in your soul. Layers and layers to this drama. And you finish this hockey team. I'm not nervous. I am all in. Go. Please. Go. Please. <laughs> I like the please at the end. And by the way, those are Love all that. live clips. You didn't voice over any of that, right? Uh, uh, that's no. not true. No, uh, that's not <laughs> true. There were a couple where I was like, wait, where's that quote from? And I had to redo it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But still, these are all things that were said during live broadcast. Yeah, no, he sent us. He sent us. He's, yeah, he sent us a first draft. And, uh, yeah, it's really funny. Well, we can pick it up again. And no, I'm the only one who derails the show. Okay. <laughs> well, I just thought I'm the only one who gets into minutiae. No Why was direct. that your takeaway? Because I thought it was impressive. <laughs> I was trying to build Steve up. What is it? Jeff? What do you want, I'm Drew? Drew? I'm saying you guys are missing the the main story here that we're streaming every least playoff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Why is that the first thing you come off of that know. and say? I thought it, I was trying to. I was remarking at my friend oh. and his passion. Where are the clips from? Uh, yeah. Where are the clips? From? I just think production wise, it's fabulous. How much? Yeah, uh, and yeah, starting. April 20th, you will be doing every Leafs playoff game. Yes, unless there isn't a Leaf playoff game on April 20th. We don't know the schedule yet. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, when the playoffs start, we'll be doing every Leaf playoff game. Mm-hmm. But don't you dare talk about the playoffs starting. On SDP. Because we don't know. Because it could be the 22nd or it could be the 20th. Yep. Might, might, might even be the 21st. Very confusing. Also, have you looked at the end of the season schedule? 
the the final day of the Stanley Cup final could potentially be June 25th. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, draft, I believe, is the 28th, 29th, and then free agency is July 1st. You forgot a key date in there. What? The Arizona auction is the 27th. Oh, fart. (laughs) After they win the Cup. They're still in it. Still in it. Still in it. There's a countdown right now on the Arizona Coyotes website. It's countdown to auction day. Oh, until they don't pay the countdown. Stop. Stop. Drew Stop. thinks that's, they have to shut thinks the clock that's embarrassing. Like, I, I think it's fun. You got I think it's fun, too. Yeah. No, yeah, listen, you it would have been fun stuff. the last time or two times ago. <laughs> Let's just you end keep the doing show. it. Fuck off. Let's end the I don't show. care. Like, I don't care until we get an answer. I don't care. No one should care. OK. Wow. OK. Wow. How many more times are we going to do this? You know what? Well, if it were, I don't give a fuck. Hey, Steve. 83 days, 32 minutes, 31 minutes, 58 seconds, 57, 56. And the show, Jesse, for God's sakes, in the show. The next chapter is stock footage of people at concerts. People playing a guitar. Soto Sopa. Mountains. <laughs> Soto Sopa. Sand. <laughs> Mountains and sand. Condos. Young professionals. Frenchies. It looks like an ad for a community college. Yeah. Which is fine. on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.